If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, guys. Hey, hi, Sal. <laughs> and this episode of Mind Pump. For the first 52 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We start out by talking about new age versus traditional spiritualism Whoa. in the fitness industry. Battle Royale. It is a fight. Let's see. <laughs> I was going to say Battle Royale. Yeah, so I we're, stole it from you. We're inside each other's heads. Yeah. We talk about Justin's- it's not all I'm inside, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We talk about Justin's carnivore <laughs> diet update. Is he painting toilets? Is he causing skid marks? Is it normal? It's more like soft serve. Find out in this episode. Find out about Justin's poop. Yeah. We talk about Adam's shoulder update. I know it seems like he's getting injured every other day. <laughs> it's because you're trying to sabotage we gotta, me. <laughs> we got to find out what's going on. Is he getting older? Sal, he's intuitively training. What's going yeah. on here? <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, broken. We talk about colonics. Uh, I'm going to be going to get one pretty soon. Um, and it's not just, just for fun. No, right. yeah, yeah. they feel good. Yeah, uh, which like is a common theme. <laughs> yeah, we, we mentioned lots of butt stuff. We yeah. mentioned yeah. our new metabolism video on YouTube. So we did a whole video on YouTube on how to speed up your metabolism. Our YouTube channel, by the way, Mind Pump TV. Go check it out. Hmm. Then we talked about health IQ um, and how it is saving people on life insurance. This is for fit people. That, by the way, if you're really fit and healthy, yeah. go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump get a free quote they are taking care of fit people then we talked about you adam's move he's moving right now into a new place will he and katrina survive the move <laughs> who's doing the designing honey i love sounds you sounds like a yeah a tv show why is the bedroom just blue and gray find out in this episode <laughs> <laughs> then we talk about a <laughs> nice follow-up to that resolving disagreements with your significant other <laughs> oh yeah, yeah absolutely then we get into the questions the first question was what is the pump, scientifically speaking, and how can you get the best pump in your workout? It's not just our newsletter. So we talk about how you can eat, things you should drink, how you work out to get the pump. What does it mean? Does it build more muscle? And there are supplements that help you get a better pump. One of the best ones is beetroot powder, which increases nitric oxide, which is also, incidentally, the main ingredient in Organifi's red juice. Look at that. Wow. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you'll get 20% off any of their supplements. Next question was, what are our thoughts on intuitive resistance training? You thought I was going to say nutrition, didn't you? Mm. Intuitive <laughs> you close. working out. So is that something you should is aim for? Is it possible? Is it possible? Next question was, how can wrist pain be remedied? That's a kind of a common one, especially here in Silicon Stop Valley. masturbating. People keep hurting their wrists. Just increase it. Right wrist oh, is yeah. the one that bothers them all the time. We talk if about- you do it that way. Wrist strengthening and mobility movements in that part of this episode. And the final question, this individual carries around a 20-pound tool bag over his shoulder all the time. He switches shoulders, but is there anything else he can do to avoid injury? We give some great correctional exercise advice in that part of this episode. Also, 50% off <laughs> MAPS Performance. MAPS Performance is our MAPS program designed for athletic, functional, fitness performance, and Sexy muscular bodies, both. Ooh, you don't have yeah. to have one or the other. You get them both with Math Performance. It's our longest program. It's the first program Adam, Justin, and I designed together. And the best part, it's half off, fifty mm -hmm. percent off. It's our first baby. It's our it first. Is. It's the first time we had sex and made a proud program. parents. <laughs> proud it's, parents. Doug, can we get like a little like a bell or an alarm, like a like a theme thing every time he transitions to the commercial at the end like that? I think that'd be awesome. Just freaking Ding. Her, yeah. You know. So it's half off right now. We've never had this program 50% off, but here's what you got to do. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. Use the code GREEN50. That's the number 50. So G-R-E-E-N 50, no space. You'll get 50% off. Also on that site, we have our bundles. This is where we combine multiple MAPS programs and discount them. Our bundle of love. Our most popular bundle is, which one is it, Justin? Our most po super bundle, because it's super. It is super. <laughs> it's a year of exercise programming. Literally 365 days planned out for you. You can find that bundle, plus 50% off MAPS performance with the code GREEN50 at mindpumpmedia.com. We got your back. Have you heard of the, the term, don't blow smoke up my ass? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that that actually comes from, like, uh, th that's something they used to really do? was blow smoke up his, 
Yeah, tobacco. <laughs> Blowing tobacco like, up somebody's ass. It's actually supposed to help, help with, you. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to help yeah. things. Yeah. Let's, have you let's seen, describe this. Like, paint me this picture have, of like how what this looks like. Have you seen the uh, some of these, uh, what are they called? Um, uh, they uh, used to stick a tube in your ass and yeah. literally blow smoke up your ass. Yeah, ceremonies. Have you seen these? <laughs> no, you, no, no, no. He's not wrong. <laughs> no, I, no, it's, no, just, no. it's so ridiculous. It is. Okay, so you've seen these, these mystical ceremonies where the shaman or whatever is smoking on the tobacco and is like blowing it on you or all oh, right and then they kind of like y- y- use yeah they like blow it around you and mm-hmm. around your head and everything Wait, yeah so tobacco smoke has been used for a long time in medicinal mystical ways and one of the things that they would do is blow smoke up your ass and of course people make fun of that and say oh don't blow smoke like you're telling me that what you're saying is real but this is bullshit you're just blowing smoke up my ass right basically like that's yeah, yeah that's the bare bones you know what makes me laugh about all this can i just tell you guys right now i'm gonna go on a rant for a second <laughs> here's what makes me laugh about all this we're in the fitness and health space right mm-hmm. and the fitness and health space also has a very strong strain of spirituality but it's it's the spirituality that exists in the health space is the crystals yeah. incense the you know that side it, of it it's right like very new agey yeah fine there's nothing wrong with that which you know i don't is, care it's something people subscribe yeah, to and i think there's a lot you can take from from different uh, practices but it's funny then we bring on uh, a catholic bishop who's spiritual in the other in a different way right and i'll get messages not a lot but i've had a couple messages of people Ugh, you get a Christian on there. Why don't you do blah, blah, blah. If I had a person on here talking about the magic of crystals and how it heals your body, I don't think I would have yeah, been like, oh, that makes sense. We already have. That's so cool. We've yeah. already had a slew of fucking woo-woo motherfuckers on this show. Yeah. Very, I've been saying true. A slew. I've been, a slew. I've been saying that for a long time, and I think I've been really good and patient and just like, yeah. all right, cool, cool. I mean, you... I, I don't really know if you remember, but the, you know me, and I'm I'm you know show my side when I get a little irritated with stuff, and like when we would be off air and traveling and doing all these conversations, like there was a part of me that was getting really irritable. I was like, can we please have a conversation with one of these guys and it not go to Ayahuasca and Mother yeah. Mother Earth and all this stuff? Like, can yeah. we just yeah. have an intelligent health fitness? You know, well that would be like us opening up. Like, do you know Jesus? Yeah, yeah. right. Like <laughs> that's what, that's my point. Is like yeah. if we were doing that, how how fast would we turn? everybody off everybody would be so turned off but it's so funny how we're so open to receive that but then we've been trained to like shun so like information like i that. think it's, it's just because it's it's different and it's that's new. exactly why yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's the part that drives me crazy yeah. it's only because only because of that well yeah. they don't see like the similarities and the parallels that they both have yeah. it's well, just very obvious to me though i think it's brilliant to to look at uh, to have people from all different walks of spiritual life talk about their practices and what absolutely, they do. And absolutely. I think there's there's things to take from most of them. At least the ones, look, if if, if a spiritual practice has gained a lot of, uh, at least a lot of traction or some traction, probably, it's probably because- probably helping a, people's lives. Yeah, there's probably yeah. a grain of truth at least right. in that particular thing. And so it's, I think it's important to stay open-minded. You don't have to buy the whole, you know, what is it? The, you don't have to buy the whole basket or whatever. You know, you could look in the basket and be like, okay, well, I like this piece. You know, this makes sense. Like, I like- Meditation, but that doesn't mean I have to become a, a, a Buddhist monk. You know, I like when, you know, Paul Check talks about talking to his food and talking to his body before he eats. Not because I think you, you're talking to the food spirit and stuff like that, but because it does make you stop for a second and right. think about what you're yeah, doing. It's, right? a good, it's a good little practice. It's a good practice. So I think that's all. Especially that's all in stuff. times where. There, there's not a lot put around the preparation of food practice because mm-hmm. back before we didn't really back before you have to kill it and skin it and then you know pluck it and take the time to you yeah know, you couldn't just reach and grab in the fr- you know reach in the fridge and right be like, or oh, throw it in the microwave barbecue flavored pork yeah. rinds yeah throw it in the microwave <laughs> or open it yes in a wrapper or drive in a drive through real quick yeah. like and just mindlessly consume like you just couldn't dude do it's that. so funny too because with kids I lo- one of the things I love about kids is their, their filters they don't have as many filters as adults do. And so my kids will be sitting there, we'll be hanging out, and like, you know, yesterday we were watching a movie together. We watched Sandlot. You, you inspired us. Yeah. I hadn't seen that movie in a long time. It was a great movie. Oh, it's a great movie. Great movie. It, yeah. Did they get inspired to like hang out? And I like, was way, I was like, please let you know. Yeah. They're my kids. They're not your kids. I know. So they don't have, a, they don't have enough. <laughs> all right. Yeah. They don't, they have, don't a, have a sports gene at all. Not at all, all right? right? <laughs> not at all, right? Yeah, that's all right. But they, anyway. They the robotics like, Daddy, gene. what is yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, what are they doing? South kids have no idea. No, they got moved by the, they actually got moved 
moved by the the, the story of it, how the, they grew up together, and how the how Benny, you know, includes anyway. Yeah, how they got included into the group. Yeah, and, that yeah. was what my kids really enjoyed. But right. anyway, as we're watching it, you know, and we had dinner and everything, and my kids are like, "I'm hungry. Do, is there anything to eat?" So I'm like, "Yeah, we have." the rest of dinner we have more more i have more ribeye i have more broccoli you guys can have some rice no i don't really want that I, you know i want like a snack and it's like it's so funny because you're not hungry and i no. explained that to I said well you know then you, that means you're not hungry this is a craving yeah i mean i said it means you're craving something and i'm not judging it right i'm not telling my kids like that's wrong i'm just helping no, helping them, them make a way become aware. yeah it. yeah like yeah, that's not hunger don't call that hunger call it craving because if you're hungry then you'll pretty much want to eat almost anything. But yeah, you're right, dude. It's 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 a pretty funny. Well, how do you handle that when that does happen? So what, you know, continue that conversation. I'm just out of curiosity how that goes. Like, does that end up you end up just allowing them? They end up going and getting the snack, or for do, the most or part, do most times they go, oh wow, they think differently. What do you see? Uh, they usually don't think differently about it because they're kids. But for, for <laughs> well, the, I appreciate you being honest. Yeah, you know, no, it's uh, true. It's not like my kids are sitting. You know, my eight year old daughter's not sitting there going, whoa. Yeah. What is hunger? You know, <laughs> she's thinking That's such like, an epiphany. Yeah, she's yeah, she's yeah. Eye, big eye roll. Right? Oh, oh, yeah, gosh, yeah. Dad, there goes yeah, dad. There goes again. dad. Yeah. She's like, can I just have the goddamn gummy bears? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like, fuck you. I want some crackers. Right. Yeah. But no, we don't have. We typically don't have snacks. So when they say that, there's, <laughs> there's no option. Yeah. So it's not. It's not like I have to deny them. I'll be like, well, sorry, we don't have anything. And oh, I, I have an apple. Do you want some exactly. strawberries? You get all creative. I'll put peanut butter and apple for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, he's got this like immediate sigh, like, Pff. yeah, you exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, anyway. I, I gotta go through the same process yeah, with my so, kids. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Do, do, they do you guys get, have snacks at all or no? No, man. Like, I try not to at all. And, and, um, you know, every now and then, cause Courtney's a bit of a snacker. She loves chips and like, like crackers and stuff. And like, I can't, like, I can't have this stuff around me, but we went gluten free. So, this is like these gluten free crackers that we still have in the house. And so, like, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll succumb to that at least. They'll be like, okay, well, let me have some crackers in dad at least. And I'm like, all right, whatever. You open the thing, it stinks so bad. Like, have you ever had gluten-free, like, crackers? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. What it, dude, <laughs> oh, man, they stink. Oh, uh, Do they really? Yeah. What kind terrible. are you getting? I don't know. I've had They're some good ones. Super organic. <laughs> Probably, you know, it must be too organic. There, there's some truth to that, though. Like, it's just me- dried broccoli crackers. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> they're, not, they're not really gluten. Cra- yeah. I've had some gluten free crackers that are freaking good. I mean, man. it was tasty, but it stinks. You well, know, one of you, was it, I think it was Doug who introduced me to the the gluten free chips at I think Whole Foods. Is it Whole Foods? You mean tortilla chips? Yeah. <laughs> they're just always they're corn, yeah. huh? Yeah. They're always gluten free. Are yeah, they? Always get corn. Cor- corn chips are always yeah. Corn yeah. is well, free. corn chip. Yeah, but I thought these were these were different, weren't they? They're from Whole Foods? No, maybe they're not the cor- tortilla chips, or they're maybe yeah. they're made with like rice or something like that. Yeah. Well, oh, we had a, we had them at one of the houses. One of you brought them. I thought Doug. Who was it? You or Doug who brought them? I don't know. Did you bring them, Doug? I don't think so. Was it mm. you, Justin? It might have been me. Yeah, yeah it's a lot because I was on. That's that the whole first time I ever had those. Yeah, they weren't and they weren't bad at all. No, yeah. there's a lot of good gluten free. Gluten free doesn't mean you healthy. Have to look for it. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. that's the thing. You still you can still get a lot of processed you know food options out there with gluten free. Yeah, so it doesn't mean healthy. I mean, mean it's all so lot. here. Yeah, because here's what food manufacturers do is they say, okay, what are the trends in the market? Right. And the market. Oh, the market now is starting to demand uh, gluten free. And so the number one goal, if you want to make money, which is what they want to do, is to create a super highly palatable yeah. gluten free food. So then they get their scientists together and they say, okay, we, we need to create a cracker or whatever that's gluten-free but also just tastes amazing. And then they spend lots of money on doing that. And there's all, a lot of options. There's buckwheat, quinoa, there's rice, potato, potato there's corn. Yeah. And so they can make a, something that is gluten-free but is just as bad for you, maybe even worse. Sugar is gluten-free. You know what I mean? Fat yeah. is gluten-free. I mean, all the macronutrients. So when you guys are – see, for me, I kind of just get rid of all that stuff. Like, it's more it's more of a nuisance to try and find things. Yeah, than totally. Than to, I just – That's why I get annoyed. It's like, I don't, yeah. I don't even want crackers in my house. Right. You know, totally. like, it's such a – like, it's not a food group. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, pointless. Yeah. No, that's, I feel the same shit. way, too. Instead of trying to find, like, a healthy option of it, yeah. it's just, like, it's just easier for it's, me not to have it in it's, the, it's, the house. Uh, it's getting to the point where it's almost as bad as the vegan – because vegan market now has been around for a while. But if you go in the grocery store and you look at the vegan food options, they are just processed chemical shitstorms, man. Yeah. Dude, I get it's so like funny. The burgers it's and the so hot funny dogs. you bring up the vegan thing yeah. right now because I, I don't know if, if we meant did we mention something recently on a show because I've I've gotten more DMs lately around people that are we vegan. mentioned trying to get that vegan bodybuilder on right I think that's uh, what okay. we talked about. So yeah, people are reaching out about and it's so funny when I you know they'll, they'll 
tell me like, hey, Adam, I'm vegan and I'm trying to get this and I'm trying to figure my macros out for this and I'm having a hard time getting this. And I'll respond back to him. I always ask, like, you know, is can I ask, is there a reason why you're vegan? And oh, I don't know. It's just healthier, I heard. Or, yeah, I or, you know, it's just, they're always like, response. O- Oprah said it's good. Yeah, or I don't really like meat that much. I'm like, okay, well, I, you, there's probably some meats that you don't like, but why follow a, a a diet just because you don't like a couple of the a couple of the foods in that food group, right? Like why not fit? And she brought up like, oh, should I, you know, should I eat fish? I'm not sure about if that's healthy or not. I'm like, absolutely. If you're having a hard time getting protein, you're you're a better source of that would be coming from fish than like your tofu and stuff, which mm-hmm. is where and protein shakes is which is where she's getting most of her protein. Instead of trying to stick to a diet just to say you're sticking to a diet even though you wouldn't mind having fish this is what drives me crazy about and this goes and i'm picking on vegan right now this goes for keto people goes for paleo people goes for all of them you know what i'm saying because they're all guilty of this slathering butter on everything yeah it's it's like like, you're well you're you're yeah exactly you're following a diet you know and you and you care more about sticking to the parameters than like probably feeding your body what it actually Mm -hmm. it needs in that moment Mm -hmm. or that time because you're lacking in well with veganism especially veganism doesn't exist because people are trying to eat uh, we're trying to create a healthier diet. That's the truth. Veganism exists because people were trying to create a diet that didn't involve hurting animals. Right. So it's not it's about cruelty. So it's different than other diets in that particular sense. Now, when people go vegan because they think it's healthier, that's when I like to have conversations with them, and, and we can you know educate and talk about that it's not necessarily healthier. Um, it's it, it, in some cases it may be because you might have a terrible um, you know omnivore diet. But if they're both very healthy, it's way harder to get all the nutrients, way harder well, to get this the Well, we've addressed this, and it's been a while since we have addressed it, but you know, every client that I ever had that switched from eating whatever, you know, whatever diet they were following before to going vegan that had felt amazing, you know, 90% of those clients was because what was wrong was you weren't getting hardly you're any- You're deficient. You yeah, you weren't getting any vegetables. Eating vegetables. vegetables <laughs> in your diet. You're eating all this yeah. processed garbage food. And now you've made that switch. Like, try just doing that and mm-hmm. watch what a difference that will make. Get mm-hmm. rid of all the processed foods, yeah. increase your intake of vegetables, and get back to me. And tell mm-hmm. me if you don't see the same response in your body. It's not that... Yeah, usually it's like a complete 180. Yeah, right. I was like eating all processed stuff and meat and cheese, and then exactly. now I'm just doing veggies only. Exactly. Right. Like, and then whoa, they get, and, and then shell they get, shock. Then they get married to that. You yeah. Know, they get married to it. And what happens many times, too, is a diet may work for a while, but then that diet may lack something that your previous diet didn't. So now, it t- and by the way, when you're lacking an, a nutrient or when you're low in a macronutrient even, it takes a little while for that to start to show up. So, for right, example- Because our, our, our bodies are resilient. Yeah. So, for example, like a lot of people go keto, hardcore, and keto foods many times include things like uh, sardines, avocados, bacon, you know, those types of things. Those foods also produce and contain lots of histamine. Mm-hmm. And- over time, if your body doesn't get rid of that histamine fast enough, you can cause uh, you know histamine buildup, which brain fog. Uh, you know, you start to feel irritable. You start to get gut issues. And this is what Doctor Ruscio enlightened you on, right? Yeah. Because this was something that mm-hmm. you were trying to figure out. You weren't feeling great on the keto diet, for and I was probably that. And so, yeah. when I, so, but that's the thing. Like, you could go on a diet for months and not notice any negative effects, but then because it's the same way all the time, right? Then you may start to like you could have a you could have a diet that's very low in iodine, for example, or very low in a, in a in a mm. you know another nutrient, a mm-hmm. mineral, for example, and you but you feel great because it has what you were missing in your previous diet. Right. But then you stay on that diet too long, and now all of a sudden you is start to feel. Is it kale shitty. that actually depletes you of iodine? Is that true? Uh, I no, I think iodine is uh, you you get a lot of it in shellfish and in like seaweed and stuff mm. um, and a depletion in iodine iodine can cause weird effects like uh, I mean if it's really bad you can get like a goiter and you can have thyroid issues but mm. you can start to uh, feel things like anxiety and stuff um, so but anyway it's um, it, that's the thing like what works for you now may not and usually doesn't yeah. work for you kind of forever, you know? And, and so we got to kind of look you at know, it. You just got to rotate it out, man. Keto people and, and vegans, all of them, they all, this is all the thing that I see is as soon as they, they adopt a new diet, they see this great change in response in their body because it was probably, they were like, just when just like we were talking about the vegans switching over, when the keto people switch over, now all of a sudden they're getting all these healthy fats mm. that they're probably, they're probably their body needed because we know it in the last 20 years how much we demonize mm. fat in the market for so long. So most people, including my 
myself, I was a trainer like this, being mm-hmm. a trainer, been through nutrition, knew all this stuff. Yeah, I used to tell clients, don't don't worry about fat. It'll yeah, find its way into your that's diet. That's exactly what I used to yeah, say yeah. to people. Like, fat's in almost everything. Don't worry, it'll get in there. And it's like that, you know, terrible advice. Yeah, right. And I didn't realize that until I went keto and, in, and ate such an abundance of of fat and I felt oh my god my skin I feel good energy I'm satiated like holy crap my everything felt better but it wasn't like oh, okay it's because I need to be on keto it's like yeah my body was deprived of this for a long time I gave it to it you know well also too like- going through this carnivore diet I haven't advertised the fact like you know I've talked about it on the show but like I don't want I'm not like advertising it as like so awesome and like this is like such a great method for everybody because you know, even for me, I know right away, like I feel certain benefits from it already just because like I've eliminated some inflammatory types of foods in my diet. Like it's, that's what I know. I know this. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's reduced down to this one thing that, that, um, my body responds to fairly well, but like, I am so looking forward to introducing carbs and introducing, you know, vegetables. Are you getting real sick of it yet? I'm I'm like, it's not that I'm getting sick of it. It's, it, it really is like in the beginning, like the first maybe seven days, I would say I was like, Oh, I don't ugh. like, I don't like, I was getting frustrated because it was like, really like I wouldn't enjoy, uh, I wasn't looking forward to anything, <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. like, it's kind of, it's kind of like just shoveling it in and it's, it's all this, a lot of the same, but, uh, my body actually now is like, it, it, it is craving, like it, it craves like those, those. So interesting. Yeah. Like I, I've turned totally a complete corner with it, but I'm checking myself mentally because I, I do want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm transitioning out of this. I'm not living in this. This is not like the end all. Like I know, like I was worried about like my shits. Like I really was. <laughs> like I was like, how is this going to go? You know, <laughs> like it was a, totally a, an experiment. What are, what are, I mean, I know, I know some people won't appreciate this, but I'm curious, how is your stool? What have you, have you, have you noticed change in it at all? How many times you are, what it's like? I mean, the, the, the frequency of it has definitely gone down. It's less bulk. Yeah, yeah. So, but like, you'd think that it was like the paint, the toilet blasted out kind of shit. And it's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> it's been a nice, you know, calm shit. Really? <laughs> so I've been actually thoroughly pleased with it. Oh, actually. Not like the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the other ones were just like, ah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. You just, just got to hold on for dear life you said, and blast you, it. You said today you made a comment that you were feeling cold. More I often. am, yeah. He, 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 that's because you're getting leaner, bro. That, no, it's not. <laughs> See? No, See, that's what not. I said. And then Sal has this other conspiracy behind it's cause it. because he's getting right? leaner, dude. No, you're not going to... Ex- Listen, okay? You have to get really lean before you lose the the, the insulating effect of body fat. No way, bro. I No way. I disagree with <laughs> that. That is not why he's colder. He's, like, he's man, not cold. You just, you're still fat. No. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not you why go you're a colder. Lot farther. You're, you're colder because your calories have dropped and your metabolism is slowing down. It's trying to adapt. And so you're cold. If you were to bump your calories yeah. within three days you'd be warm no, even if you didn't get you're also co- again you're also you're also colder because you have less fat on your fucking body bro a lot of all those is, are a factor so here I'm, I'm gonna so here that. here's the thing that's that's I, I know what you're saying fat does have an insulating effect but it's not what people think yeah. it's not nearly the insulin uh, insulating effect of muscle this women for example typically feel colder than men do and women always tend to ha- carry a higher body fat percentage it's not that the he's lost this I'm huge turning insulation. Into a woman? Yeah, no. How many pounds down metabolism. are you? No. How many pounds down are you? Me, uh, ten, I think now. Yeah, ten, yeah. ten pounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's distributed all over his entire body, pretty evenly. Okay, that's like a blanket. Yeah, it's not enough. A blanket of fat. <laughs> it's, it's a blanket enough. of fat. It's just gotta take enough, it up. Man. Yeah. It's, no, no, that's but not I, I, it's no, not. Maybe it's not a thick blanket. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> bro, it's a blanket, watch, bro. Watch when you refeed. If once you start to refeed, give yourself two, three days after, well, even before you gain body honestly, fat. Honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying. Well, anything. that I, I have a the worry. The increase of calories will create a thermogenic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that will heat his body. That's what I'm saying. Fucking science. Yeah, his, know that, but. his metabolism is is adapting yeah. downward because and that's what's going to happen when, yeah. you, when you. Well, that's been my worry the whole time is like, you know, going because it is very very easy to go low calorie with this diet. That's sure. so. My biggest concern for you is when you come out of this motherfucker. This is going to be a beast. He just it is. he doesn't care. He wants to win, bro. I, it, 
You listen, give a fuck about you guys said competition. You know, <laughs> we're gonna, your fault. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do like those celebrity challenges. Where are they now? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do that afterwards, bro. Just so you know, there's gonna be like a 60 days. Uh, where are they now? Uh, Justin's like, in the hospital. Just big old like beard, fat as fuck. Yeah, big yeah. old beard, <laughs> 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 fucking cheeseburgers all over him. So you, so uh, so you're down 10, and yeah. then is your body weight changed, Adam? I'm down one pound. Down one, which that's good. Uh, I'm down now. Six or seven. Whoa. Yeah, maybe six Whoa, or seven. Whoa, skinny mini. He's, he's, going, well, no, he's the, going for the Shredsville, huh? No, but don't, that, but don't go too fast to lose muscle. No, yeah, I know what I'm doing, bro. It's, <laughs> it, I'm fluctuating because, um, you know, I'll, I'll cut harder and then I'll bump a little bit, but right now I'm down maybe six, six or seven. Are you counting calories or macros or anything? No, I never do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I look at it kind of, you know, and I'll, I'll generalize, but not really. I just go by feel. So, like, yesterday was a – this week my calories are going to be lower – much lower than they have been. And then over the weekend, I'm going to have more food. And we'll see. We'll see how I feel. Mm. I'm judging off performance, judge, judging off of how so I look. So Jedi of you. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I think so. <laughs> it's also a pain in the ass to enter things. He's above it. everybody. No, <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah. not, that's not what that's it is. That's what it is. Well, we'll no, see. that's, that's we'll not see. what it is. Above, <laughs> above the rest of us minions. Yeah. No, I think you know tracking has got tons of value, yeah. but I'm not – in six weeks, I'm not – here's the deal. If I was trying to get down to 3% body fat, yeah. I would for sure start – adding things up but then you can get to know three percent body yeah, fat yeah. i'm not even tr- i'm not even tracking that hard right now because yeah. you don't i don't need to it's that's that, what i'm saying yeah, uh, at what, uh, there's levels to where i have to be yeah. tracking and weighing i was just actually talking to enzo last I'm night only tracking one thing so it's yeah. pretty easy, <laughs> 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 pretty easy. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah but i, I do I, I am paying attention though so i'm paying attention to my steps and my movement throughout the day you know so i and i I changed my intake based off of that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the other day after my shoulder hurt, um, I ended, that was probably a, a, is it still hurt by the way? Yeah. Uh, it's not better. No, it's better than what it was. You get you a witch doctor or something. You know? I know. Fuck. That's just out. blowing smoke up. Yeah. That's <laughs> smoke, blow some smoke up your <laughs> Thank ass. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, you're welcome. It's supposed to help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I won't be that guy. Uh, yeah, we'll no. It's, uh, and again, today I'll, I'm gonna. You know, yesterday I did legs. You know, but even just I, I, I did walking lunges with really light dumbbells and just the holding the dumbbells fucking just oh, shit. lit me up. Right, so. Mm. It's still hurting. Um, so you only lost a pound of muscle so far? Yeah. It's a- <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, man. Damn it. There's a lot of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot well, of obstacles. Some, some mud uh, it's, like, it's like you're running. It's like a log. Uh, just to keep jumping like, in front like, of you. Yeah, this like treadmill that. that goes nowhere. I like yeah. it like that, though. Yeah. <laughs> I like it like that. It's yeah. no I know fun you do. It, it's no fun. That's why it's me. happening. Yeah, of course. I'm like, I'm, that's what Katrina would say. She's like, you're bringing it upon yourself. You oh, know? no. Oh, no. <laughs> No, she wouldn't say that. Yeah, to right no, now. Like, dude. Uh, speaking of uh, of shits, you know what my my girl just booked for both of us? What? Uh, hydrocolonic. Oh my god, I knew you were gonna say colonic. Yeah, yeah. So really? she so she just did one this morning, um, and so we had so she she's like doing this like a dude, regular. You haven't thing? Even, no, no, once. you haven't even done the enema with coffee yet, bro. I've been waiting for I've, your. I feel like that's another. That's the next level. I don't uh, feel like that's the you, first thing to do. You go colonic first. Well, what do you think in anima? It's kind of like that. What, well, this is in, in a place like so. Here's, oh, so it's, there, there's like clinical people. Yeah, no, no, no. I feel. Like, I see. I feel like the doing it to yourself in the bathroom would be. Yeah, the first I feel step. like that's the easiest. I, I don't know about that. You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid. Of, this is why I'm afraid of putting coffee in my butt. Mm. Because you absorb things that way. You yeah, do. exactly. And I'm sensitive to caffeine. Uh, and what I'm afraid of is I'm going to put so coffee just, up there. Some maybe decaf. you'll do better with it that way. Do some decaf. That, that'll be like the I'm go-to. Like, oh, get the yeah. craziest. <laughs> just yeah. put, do some decaf. Throw some some uh, pre-workout. <laughs> <laughs> Aim a pre-workout. See, that was an experiment. Yeah. 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 So oh. she she went this morning and she was a little apprehensive. And one of her friends has been telling her, like, I do this. It's so awesome. And you know, and I've always been like, that's stupid. You don't need to do that because how are, how have we been taught in in through personal training certifications? What have they always said about you know getting you know hydrocolonics and fasting and all those different things? Right? They yeah. laugh at them. Yeah, it's right. all like hokey. Yeah, the body detoxes per by well by itself. No need to fast. It's stupid. Your liver detoxes. You don't need to do hydrocolonics. Your body, whatever. And they've always been saying that, and so that's what I've stuck to. But because I've changed my mind on so many different things, right? And because her friend has been telling her for so long, and then, and then I started to think myself, how many what how many cultures have been doing versions of colonics to 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 cleanse or whatever? It's actually pretty damn widespread all over the place. So I said, okay, there might be something to this. It's kind of interesting. So she went this morning and she was like. She was texting me while she's doing it, and she's like, 
Yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> well, well. so what, should they put you in a room. Gonna do, Here gonna comes the gravy train. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm FaceTiming. Yeah. Yeah. I, got, yeah. I got the video if you guys want. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But So she says, uh, you know, uh, uh, she says to me, it's fucking awesome. <clears throat> you got to try this. It feels great. Then, And she, by the way, it's, it's self-administered. So where she went, they tell you what to do. Oh, wow. And then you do it yourself. And so I guess what happens is it pumps in water and then when you're ready for it to come out then you push the water and it sucks the water back out and you do this kind of back and forth back and do forth you get to watch it yeah they'll, they yeah, that's a little I, weird i don't know if you get to watch it or whatever yeah. but she's like dude i feel amazing she's like i feel incredible she's like stuff came out or whatever mm. and she's a very healthy person so she's like i bought you a session so i'm gonna go try it out let you guys know what yeah, happens. yeah i've known friends who've done it and mainly really? yeah mainly it wasn't like they were being proactive about their health. It was because of something that was wrong, you know, like internally. And then so that, that was like they're they're trying to like figure it out by like using a colonic to kind of get in there. So it's interesting, dude. Yeah. I'll let you guys know. What I don't know. Yeah. I don't maybe know I'll bring, if I would willingly go do that. Maybe was, I'll bring Enzo with me. He can, uh, he can <laughs> film yeah. the whole thing. Uh, let you guys know. What I happens. feel like I probably have a clean asshole. So I don't, uh, know. I don't yeah. think I need it yet. I feel like I need a lot of lube. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. I yeah. swim backwards in the pool occasionally. So. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just naturally. Just, oh, yeah. dude, that, that, that brings up a good point, though. Like water skiing, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, there's been some times. Yeah, I've done lots of way up there. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Oof. With water skiing? Yeah, you'll oh, spit bro. it out your mouth. When you actually try and jump and be Shut like athletic, up, bro, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. You know, like when you try and like do things that are like super hard, like you just, you lose your shit and then you fall and it's really bad. Like I've, I've done a couple times where like water just went like way up in there. Water goes up your butt yeah. from water skiing? Think about it. You're yeah, doing, man. You're 30, I mean, it makes you sense. 30 miles an hour and you slam on your butt first and shorts that, are, you know, the water penetrates them shorts. That I makes like, a lot of sense. <laughs> and then I regretted it immediately. I was like, that was a stupid idea. So like, hold on a second. Jumping like that. After the water, the then lake, you, and by the way, it's it, lake water that goes up your butt. Yeah, and yes, you got to spit it out good. your mouth. That's you. didn't go up that far. <laughs> that's parasites, dude. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. Maybe they're beneficial, though. So hold on a second. It goes up your butt. Then what do you do when you're in the water? Do you have to push it? out or you leave it in there you just oh you know it just hurts i think it you absorb kind of burns and then it goes out you know it, jesus i'm definitely not gonna be water skiing <laughs> just kidding i wasn't gonna do that anyway yeah That's not a thing. i know dude our, our the video that i uh that i recorded recently on on metabolism how to boost your metabolism that should be up on youtube uh pretty soon oh is that up and going yeah i think that's gonna be up there uh. Sweet. That's a very controversial topic, apparently. You know, it's funny. We've been talking about reverse dieting and speeding up your metabolism through training. And I've actually had people send me articles saying that, that that's not true and that can't happen. That you you can't speed up your metabolism by, by you know, reverse dieting and do, doing these different things. Interesting. Which is, you know, this is the thing about studies. Studies have to be done really, really well, but... Through our experience, it, it's it's very true. I've, I've done it so often that I can count on the fact that we're going to be able to speed someone's metabolism up Absolutely. considerably. Yeah. So it's crazy to me that that's something that's that's you know people still well, debate. Were people contesting you too about like the the, the cardio? Uh, not being the most advantageous way, like or like actually doing a ton of cardio will actually lower your metabolism. Yeah, people people were getting upset about that. Yeah. Some people like, no, cardio is great. And I'm like, well, I never said it wasn't. All I'm saying is, if you depend on that, is that becomes your primary tool for fat loss, it's gonna be very difficult, and your body will start to adapt, and then you'll be in a position where you have to do lots of cardio just to maintain because your metabolism. Tries if to adapt. if you were to give somebody a cardio regimen or prescription for most of their life for health purposes because oh, we what would that look like to you like three times a week of hit cardio i would go i would do a little bit of hit and then a little bit of steady state so it'd be like one mm -hmm. for the average person yeah 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 oh well average person i don't even know if i'd recommend hit because the average person can't well hits that's all see now that's hit is prescribed poorly by some people but hit can still work for somebody who's morbidly obese and i Just mean hit, their heart rate yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean depending so, on the tool or yeah, device they're using yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like a bike or, yeah, or, or how i always taught you know i taught it just through breathing a breathing yeah. test you know yeah, uh, yeah i guess you're right so, i would probably do hit once a week and maybe two days a week a steady state you know something like that like 20 30 minutes of steady state and like a 10 minute hit session once a week, if it's just for health, if they're also resistance training. Because here's the thing, resistance training, if you do it properly, mm -hmm. you are going to get cardiovascular benefit as well. Well, that's, yeah, that's definitely a factor. And I think too, like you could, like I, I've definitely gone through phases where I'm I'm focused on just hit 
you know, cardio. And so I'll do like a couple weeks, but, but it's like intermittent, like it's in, in spurts just to maintain like certain levels of endurance and in athleticism, as far as like, you know, being able to get up and, and be explosive and have, you know, a gas tank behind. When me. you look at exercise and you look at it in a way like, okay, what's going to provide me the most benefit for my health long term? You also have to look at it in the context of, you know, your life and, and what that entails. So here's the deal with cardiovascular training. Cardiovascular training definitely can strengthen the heart and the lungs, and it builds. It can build lots of endurance. It's one of the best, you know, obviously it's cardiovascular training. So if you want to build cardiovascular endurance, that's the type of training that you want to do. But what are the health benefits? It, it works your heart, and it's good for your lungs. Now, in mm -hmm. the context of normal everyday life, do you need tons and tons of stamina and endurance? Not really. You don't need a ton of it. Okay. What yeah, you not need not anymore. Yeah. Not I mean, you need endurance. You want to be able to to, you know, hike or do things with your kids and stuff like that. But you don't need the endurance to run five to ten miles and so you just don't need that. Now people will say, Well, I don't need to have all the strength either. I don't need to be able to deadlift, you know, three hundred pounds and squat all this weight, which is true. You don't. You don't need tons of strength. You're not lifting crazy heavy things all day long. But that's not really why we push the strength. It's not because, you know, we think Every day you need to be super massively strong. It's because in the context of modern life, the best insurance you can have for your health is more muscle, which equals a faster metabolism yeah, it and also more makes energy. You, and it makes you more insulin sensitive. Right. So if you're sedentary all day long and you're exposed to all this food, yeah. it makes more sense to focus on strength than it does to make it the focus all on endurance. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Of course. If the if our everyday life consisted of Oh, I have to hike five miles to get my water. I have to jog over here to do that. Well, then, yeah, you would want to train with to, to get that much of endurance. But our lives are not that physically demanding. So when I look at working out from a health perspective for clients, I look at it as, okay, what is their day, day demand? What are the challenges that are going to come? And how can we ensure against... Well, the and, negatives of those and challenges. And strength training helps to fortify the joints. Like versus like if you're just focused on cardiovascular all the time, like there's a point of where it starts to wear down and the tissue actually dude, kind of work like wears down against you. Dude, as you get older in 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 modern societies, as you get older, what are the killers? What are the killers besides heart disease and diabetes, which we just talked about? Having a faster metabolism is a great insurance against those. So let's eliminate those for a second. Let's look at the other ones, falling down and, hur and, right. and hurting yourself, immobility, hormone changes, okay? All three of those things, the hormone changes can cause health problems, but really that's a quality of life that you end up losing. Falling down, hurting yourself, that can definitely kill you. Loss of mobility is a quality of life thing. Those three things, strength training, proper strength it training. It addresses those. 100%. Completely. 100%. Yeah. Cardiovascular training does a little mm -hmm. bit, but it's not the same, not even close. No, it's not. You know, so that's, and resistance Not only training. that, but it can also, and this is where I think people get frustrated when you say stuff like this or you trigger people, is it can make a lot of problems worse. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have, if you have poor walking mechanics and then you go run, like, you have no idea what you're compounding right then. It's the exaggerated version of that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And it, and you don't have to be that far off for it to be bad. When, you, when you're when you running for distance like that, where 30 minutes to an hour or lo some longer, and that constant pounding. I mean, it reminds me when, I remember when we all had uh, Amelia Boone on, and I just, like, listening to her, I'm like, God damn, dude, like, the punishment her body has, mm -hmm. has taken, like, mm -hmm. is crazy. And I have all the respect in the world over because she's a fucking crazy athlete. I mean, the right. fact that she has a high-performing job. One of the job. most disciplined human beings. Oh, yeah, she is. A, she's a yeah. freaking savage. But at the same time, too, like, for her body, my yeah, heart breaks for, yeah. for her thinking about what she's going to feel like in 10, 15 mm -hmm. years. Because of that constant repetitive. Well, that's and that's just it. Cardiovascular activity is it's repetitive. It doesn't lend itself well to training different movement patterns necessarily. Um, and let's be real: if you want to, if you're trying to correct muscle imbalances and improve mobility, you don't use cardio. No correctional exercise specialist in the world uses cardio to work on. Like if you have forward shoulder, or you have an anterior posterior pelvic tilt, or if you have knee pain, whatever. Cardio is a terrible way to correct imbalances because there's not much you can do. Yes, there's different forms of cardio, like you could swim or you could run or you could hike or you could write, but resistance training is extremely versatile. I could take anybody, anybody, and I can do resistance training with them because I can modify it to their body. Cardio doesn't really 
allow itself. Now, what's the benefit of, what's the, the plus side of cardio? It's simple. What's the negative of resistance training? It's complex. Mm-hmm. Resistance training is far more complex. I could I could get an elliptical trainer, and almost anybody could get on there. Which is why I mean, most people give up right there. That's right. Oh, yeah. Right out the bed, like I don't know. That's I don't right. know how to squat. I don't know yeah. how to deadlift. I don't know how to do these movements. I've heard scary things. I've heard of people injuring themselves, and so there's that fear of getting started. It's a well, it's a steeper learning curve for it's sure. It's tough too because like you see that even in like the app market, like if it comes to a fitness app, it's used usually like some kind of walking step count or like running and that's it because people just they they have to to be able to get up and do it like right away without like having to think too hard about it yeah that's just kind of what you're dealing with and so i think that uh, that's definitely it's unfortunate because we treat strength training that way we also treat nutrition that way yeah i I mean those two things i feel like people it's it's so calm you mean i have to figure it out just tell me what diet to follow exactly yeah just what you know whatever the newest give me the plan tell me like the grocery list i don't want to think about it right how many times do we i mean as soon as when keto came out and carnivore i mean as soon as these things fasting like as soon as they become popular it's like you hear all these people that are doing it, and it's just because it's easy. It's something. Of for course, them to- if you want to write a book on a diet and you want to make a lot of money, it has to do it has to have a few things. A, it's got to be catchy. Mm-hmm. If it's counter to what people have been told for a long time, mm-hmm. that's great. So if like it's been low fat for a long time, oh here, eat all the fat you want. If it's been you know low carb all the time, eat more carb. Whatever. It's got to be catchy. Mm-hmm. It's got to be simple as fuck. Super, super simple. It's got to be low calorie. Otherwise, people aren't going to lose weight. Right. Yeah. So if I can make it as simple as hell. That literally is the formula. That is the formula. Yeah. That's 100%. Oh, so, yeah. When you go back and look at all the diets that have come that we've come across in the last 20 years, you know, you can, and you can go to Barnes & Noble, and there's a fucking huge shelf of all these books, and read them all. The one thing that they all have in common is a calorie deficit. Yep. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's exactly in like carnivore diets. It's hilarious to me because, wow, like I get people like actually criticizing the way I'm doing it and all these kinds of things. Like, I'm like, what? Like, how do you I criticize like how you're meats? doing it? <laughs> because I like, I use like different meats sometimes, you know, it's not the same exact thing with like, like no flavor, just water and meat. Like, that's yeah. like, uh, so anyway, it's just, it's just funny to me because like really the benefit everybody gets immediate is like weight loss, right? Sure. So, so they think it's like their body's like, oh, I'm just so much more receptive to this. Well, guess what? You're on like a super low calorie diet. Yeah, right. And like right you said, and you're, you're eliminating inflammatory foods. And like that too. You're eliminating carbohydrates. All the bloat and all yeah, this other the bloat, stuff. the gone. water retention, all these things you're seeing. It's one it's of like, the reasons why fasting is becoming a very popular way to diet also. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah which but, is, I don't like, but it's easy, but because it's easy. Like I said, you know, if I if if I wrote a book that was called the Every Other Day Diet, and I said, hey, every other day eat whatever you want, and then every other day don't eat at all. Super simple, basic rule. There is one rule. There, I know. There, there, yeah, and I could sell the fuck out of it, right? It's easy, right? I could say, hey, here's your two rules: every other day eat whatever you want, every other day don't eat at all. People are like, oh my god, easiest diet ever. I'm gonna try it, and then they'll lose weight because they've cut their um, calories by fifty percent. Oh, you <laughs> saw that? Yeah, exactly. You saw That's, that with intermittent fasting already. There was people that were like using healthy foods in adjacent to the uh, intermittent fasting, and then there was people that was like, no, you can eat like McDonald's and this. Doesn't and even then, matter. Doesn't matter. Do those you guys still exist? It. Remember when we first started talking shit about all that stuff, and then people would tag us on like the pizza guy, the guy who would eat. Yeah, he, full- yeah he's still there. He's got oh, a huge following, by the way. Really huge, like it's half so, a million. Followers. Oh, that guy that had like. Fruit Loops on his pizza. And yes, all this disgusting yeah. and shit. It, like he does. They do all these food. He's like, challenges. Look how lean I am. And yes, terrible. Yeah, that irritates me. Ter- he's promoting such terrible shit. So that those guys still. I was wondering if that was just like a fad for yeah. a while, where people are watching that stuff, and yeah, most people wonder, got like, smart. And what a ref- on. what a reflection on 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 society. Yeah, that a guy like that has half a million followers. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe people mostly are watching just to do what we're doing and be like, oh, what the it's because we're. All, uh, I doubt it. Yeah, we're they, the, there's a lot of people like, yeah, I uh, want to do that too. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, we're the you know the Maury Povich Ricky Lake generation yeah. you know what I'm saying like that's we tune in you you would you tune into that you can't look away it's like watching a train wreck yeah I hate that you know by the yeah. way did you guys see on the forum uh one of our one of our members sells life insurance and he went through the health IQ process did you oh. guys read the post no I didn't read that so he went through so he's I can't remember his name he does life insurance so this is a field that he's very aware of yeah he was in our forum he did the whole process he actually applied and he said that the whole process is like 100 questions. Mm-hmm. And he said that you'll get discounts for competing in fitness things, like if you're in the NPC or if you're a runner. or what. Like I ask you a whole bunch of questions wow. 
to ins- and he said they're good questions to ensure that you're a fit and healthy person. Mm-hmm. And he said that the quote he got was lower than what he's able to quote people. Oh, that's dope. Himself. Oh, that makes yeah. me happy. Isn't that great? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I they, love our they're form. they're really really dedicated, really dedicated to just serving like the fitness health yeah. minded community. So all you got to do is really like listen to 10 of our episodes and you'll just ace it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just well, make I like sure have time. I, I no, like remember it. when we took the test, the, remember when they first, the first promotion they did when we were we first got sponsored by them, we were doing the There was a, an actual IQ yeah, test. Yeah, the, the IQ test with for and I, I mean I got some wrong. I mean, <laughs> I didn't ace it. I was like, right. "Damn, dude." But you got 90% of, or something. Yeah. Right. You got a good grade. <laughs> I think they had some faulty questions. I think you and I scored though. the same. I we did. We both got like pretty sure that's some, yeah, they, they've they've readjusted since, right? Yeah, but yeah. I, maybe but they adjusted because of us. Like, I think no, so. no, 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 this yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. right. But that's a, that's an interesting <laughs> field if you think about it, because you know when it comes to life insurance or health insurance or whatever, your rate is calculated off you, but it's also calculated based off of all the other risk that they are with all the other people, and it's kind of not fair when you're like like here like here's a deal like people talk about. Um, uh, people talk a lot about uh, like the Obamacare or whatever. If you're a really fit, health, healthy person, you kind of get fucked. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you pay. You're what you're doing is you're paying for people who are really unhealthy right. and out of shape. Sick. Yeah. And because you're fit and healthy, you don't cost that much. You know, yeah. fit and healthy people don't cost the health, you know, the, the health companies or whatever that much money which is backwards yeah you know and and i'm glad that there there's a company like this that is kind of addressing that and actually building currency within you know you being health conscious you doing the right types of things yeah because if i'm going to get life insurance and i'm a fit and healthy person i my risk is way lower i'm not gonna i'm probably not gonna die as is or my my odds of dying early or much lower than most way lower dude not to switch gears on your incredible commercial right there but we we did it we do this um we've been buying uh furniture from this company um called trading's Trading spaces. Oh fuck! I fucked them up. Trading again. spaces. No, no, didn't you? I think uh, Doug, you remember the name of it? It's over in Fremont. Anyways, what I thought was cool, I've never seen this before, is all of my all the furniture I've bought there. I've put the insurance on it, which I normally turn down bullshit like that. Like, oh, you uh, buy the insurance or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this is the first time I've ever been pitched this. They're like, yeah, you, you're. It's insured for the next five years, and if you don't collect on the insurance or use it, you actually get refunded the money. Towards store credit, anything you want to get here. What? Oh, was, that's a no brainer. They give money back. Yes. I was now like, how <laughs> expensive is the insurance? Like uh, three, five hundred dollars, depending on the piece, right? How big the piece was, but somewhere between three. But I was like, shit, I'll pay for that if I know I'm getting it back. You never get it back. And this is for furniture. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. No, I thought that was. I thought that that's was. Why I've never like you know some warranties. Yes, you get some living really spaces. But, that's yeah, the name yeah. of it. You sure you're not getting shuck and jive by, know, right? by the dude? Oh yeah, dude. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. And, then, and then like you know a couple years later, it's out of business. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh, oh yeah. Shit. Buy a membership at our gym. No, no, no. This works in Japan, <laughs> Hong Kong clubs. You know, Only in this location. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. remember those, yeah, yeah. Those, oh man, I gotta drive here and I gotta fax oh, this, dude. Who even has a fax machine anymore? They have some way too. I, I love. I love some. I, there's got to be somebody who listens to our show that works here. This company's so huge. They. I don't think they get paid on. Well, they say they don't get paid on commission, right? But they are like very thorough and follow up like crazy. And they at they do say that they get like the scoring on reviews and everything. But they. I've never seen somebody uh, so aggressive for you to leave a review for them without being compensated for it somehow. So I'm really interested in the way they pay because they don't pay commissions. They do. They Did you sell- get a discount to mention them on our show? No, I swear I didn't. <laughs> oh, wow. I swear I did. Uh, a little side hustle. Yeah, right? yeah, I did. Yeah, I get, well, good job, Adam. Hey, if like, I, look, man, I, if I did, price. I fucked it up. I can't even get your name right. <laughs> like, this uh, asshole. No, no coupon we gave code. We no, gave him like, a free bet and he can't even fucking get our damn, name right. Oh, <laughs> that would yeah, be the worst yeah, commercial yeah, ever. Do you guys Do you guys get along? I just thought that was fast. Do you guys get along when you furnish your shop or are you the guy that picks out? The- uh, we've had a, so Katrina and I in the seven years we've been together have been in more uh, ruffling conversations this last mm. you know sixty days than probably ever. She cares about pillows, right? <laughs> that's, that's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, and I think it's just a combination of everything, right? The the amount of work that we do together, and so how much we have to communicate with that. The stress for her from moving away from her her mom, like that's a big deal. She, you know, her mom. Oh yeah, I didn't even right. think of that. Yeah, yeah, she's right next door. She is, and not, and you know, her mom, you know, lost her husband just two years ago. It has it just barely yeah. hit two years. Yeah. So there's a, there was a lot going on with that. I'm also telling her burn everything, get rid of everything, so let go of all your stuff. We're getting all new stuff. So I know that was really challenging. So she's got a ton of stuff going on 
with her business and all the there work. There is that, a lot of emotion connected to getting rid of old things. Right. There's a sure. lot. So I recognize mm-hmm. all of that. And then we add in the fact that we are now also shopping for and, and putting the house together. But she's been incredible. She's been, um, you know, she's been very, uh, like our master bedroom is like blue and gray are the colors, you know? So it's, she's, I think she's allowed me to kind of take the lead on a lot of that mm. stuff like that. Although mm. she has had very much so her say and whatever we get to, but I think she's allowed me to kind of take the lead on that, which is, <clears throat> which has been nice because you're like a big cowboy star in the middle. Or no, like, see, and I would never, do, but, <laughs> I would wow, ne- wow. Cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, I definitely know she wouldn't let that fly yeah, right. for sure. But, uh, but yeah, no. So there's been a lot of that back and forth between her. I mean, I said something on the show the other day and she gave me shit for it. She was pissed off about well, it. Cause, cause said she didn't have a good. Yeah. Cause I called, <laughs> cause I called her out on her, on her stuff like that. Whatever. She starts, bark, she starts barking at me over that. I'm like, well, hey, easy, easy, okay? Yeah. But come on, there's we each have our strengths, and <laughs> you know, maybe that one's just not your strength. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that you'd have no I'm just taste. Saying I'm you good have, at that. Yeah. 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 I don't know That's what the it. problem is. Yeah, she's like, what are my strengths? <laughs> yeah. Let's list my Let's strengths. Right and you're down really, order. you're yeah. really yeah. fucked. Oh, yeah. I've oh. had this list in my back pocket. Yeah. For, yeah. Like, I the last down. year. Yeah. Well, baby, you know I love you. You know you're the greatest. You're the best. No, but it's been. I like my day. We definitely have had probably the. This has been in seven years one of the most challenging things that we've been to, and we've been through a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, in with in both our relate both of our families and stuff, and in seven years, and this the dynamic of everything at this time. But I mean, one of the things that I love about her is every time that we have even moments like this in a relationship, we always come out stronger on the other side because we always can look back and reflect. Like man, I would I would never want to go through all that with anybody else. Like I can't imagine right. all those things hitting and being in any relationship I've ever been in before, any other woman that I've ever met. I can't imagine it would have crumbled. You're right, or yeah. I would have just like ah. How funny! You know? How funny is that? That moving us. It is, by the way, one of the most stressful things you'll ever do with with a uh, for couples is it's moving. Worst, man. How weird is that though? Because it shouldn't be if you think about it. It's like we're just moving. We're not breaking up. We're not, but it is, and I think it's because your whole, your home base is shook up. Yeah. So you're in this state of anxiety. You're well, in think state about it. Of think if you, if you take, you love to go back all the time. Talk about evolution and stuff, right? So go all the way back to like. You know what that what that meant way you know thousands of years ago like oh, <laughs> up and moving your kids. That's a good point. Just think about yeah. that. Where are we going? All these things. Yeah, yeah. we have to leave. We're yeah, not, we don't have enough food. Right, we might die on the way there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I finally felt safe and protected here. Like oh, and now, totally. so you got to think there's got to be this these animal like instincts inside of you that already naturally. Oh, that's interesting. Kind of kind of go in that direction, and then you you're you're digging up old stuff too. So you're probably the uncertainty of going through all. I mean, I caught myself going through high school photos and old stuff like that so old memories are coming around both parties are probably going through things like that you're deciding if you want to let go of something that yeah. you know uh, yeah. it's of value it's to you it's just a stressful time yeah that's yeah. all it is and then you the laborious part of it yeah. like you know shit how I- much of it how awesome well how interesting is that though that many times couples have struggles it has nothing to do with anything that the person did it has everything to do with the fact that they're just both stressed. Yeah, it's like the emotional is, state. And that, and that is a big learn that is a big, big well what's, thing to understand. What's amazing is when you find a partner that sees that and gets that and too. And then you know, backs away. And that's what I mean by how we can come out all we always come out stronger is because we always were able to. You know, like, it's like, okay, we well, didn't like, do anything, yeah, I didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's like, damn, we check this out. We had this happen and then that happened, and then we had to deal with that and yeah. then this, and it's like fuck and we still love each other isn't that crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what i'm saying like they, there's yeah. this there's this respect for the other person because they do see that they do reckon we have that ability now maybe when you're in it i'm human and we're like er, frustrated with each other sure. but once everyone has their their moment where they take some time and reflect a little bit which her and i always do yeah usually or, if you can apply that practice of just like before you act and like or react you know in a, in a way you just take like some moments and breaths like Usually, like more times than not, you're not gonna like just come out with something that, that's that gonna hurt the other person. That is a very, very uh, effective thing to to kind of understand is to is to, if you and your partner can both agree that when you're above a certain level of stress, regardless of where it's coming from, but usually coming from outside sources, if you're at above a certain level of stress, that you decide 
okay, we're not going to, we're yeah, going to have this break, conversation. We go different directions. That is a very, very this is, So check this tool. out. So this is something yeah. that we do, right? So that's a, this is a mutual thing that we've talked about many a times. Like when we get to that point, if it ever gets to that point where we just disagree, not only do we break, but then we, there's just this unsaid pack that we both have disciplined ourselves to, okay, now when we break, when I go into thought by myself and mm-hmm. you know process it, it is 100% trying to be in that person's shoes as much as I can, like, and be as empathetic as I possibly can. Like, can I see mm-hmm. where she's coming from in this situation? And that's what I'm meditating on is trying to get there. Is trying my hardest to truly get there. Right. Where I think most people they break and, and they, they try want, to formulate their own. They argument. try exactly. Yeah. They try yeah, and yeah. strengthen their argument so that when they re- come back again, they have more points mm-hmm. to to make so they're right. Where it's like we've already figured out that we're not going to see eye to eye on this. Mm-hmm. Now where I'm at is. How can I be even more empathetic and understanding to her point of view? And I, I want to try. Now you guys come together and then the, the rule is you have to say something that you think I have a point on and I have to say something you have a point What's on. What's crazy is that because we have, because that's kind of this unsaid rule that we both do and have, have done since we've been together, when we come back, it's right away talking about that person's perspective. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I know that this made you feel this way. I can, I can tell, and I'm sorry. And it's always like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, there's this, it's just a natural thing. Cause if, and that's how I know that she's gone and done the same thing I did, because when you come back and it's not a defense statement first or mm-hmm. questioning me more, you know, cause that's the other thing. Like, so guys formulate their argument, girls find more things to bring up. Yeah. You know, that's what happens when they get together. Mm-hmm. And that's the typical yeah. thing. But when yeah. she does- You always do this. Remember yeah. that one time? Yeah. Like, oh my yeah. God, yeah. what are we arguing about? Right, right. So when I know she comes to, when we get reunited and she comes to like, you know, I see that I did this and it made you feel this way. I'm sorry with an apology and understanding to probably how I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I know. I know that you went and meditated on the same thing that I did, which is the other person mm-hmm. taking Yeah, and I've off. learned too, sometimes it takes even more time you know, for, for her to process some of the things. And so I want to- Oh yeah, like, the angrier they I are. I want to get in <laughs> back back in and be like, let's resolve this. Let you know, like, I, and, and I've learned you know, the hard way through, through the process of like, okay, yeah, we did separate and all this, but like she's still stewing through this like i i can't like prod just yet like yeah. uh, it's too early you have to both agree before you do something like that before that uh, that comes up you have to both when you're calm say okay here's the strategy this is what we're going to do and then we agree upon it beforehand mm-hmm. and then when it comes up you you know you do that because it's a it's an effective strategy otherwise you get caught in the weeds and then it's your egos talking to each other oh, well you can't ever forget that this person that you're fighting or you're talking to is your teammate Right and together it doesn't you're tra- make any sense. And to together fight. exactly you're and together lose. and together you're trying to win the game, yeah. the it. game of life. That's it. And fighting with your teammates will never be productive. Yeah. And so if you if you really truly look at your partner as your t- your life teammate, and that's how you view the relationship, then what an I asshole! Always slap her on the button. I go, Good game. <laughs> that's right. What <laughs> an time. asshole that you works are every time. to yeah. continue continual continually to be an antagonist and causing drama and issue because you're only killing the team. Have you guys ever seen that sculpture? It was at Burning Man maybe three or four years ago. One of the best sculptures I've ever seen. And it's a it's two wire it's like wireframe sculptures of two adults sitting back to back away from each other, mm-hmm. both angry. You can tell they're both angry. But then inside the wire sculpture they're hugging. No, inside oh. the wire sculpture there's two <laughs> sculptures know. of children who are reaching for each other on the inside. Ah. Very, very powerful. And it reminds me of when you fight with someone like that, how it's your egos are battling, yeah. but your inner, true and pure persons want to meet together and work together. And it's like, you know, it's such a powerful, I mean, I'll, I'll send it to, there it is, right there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Look how great that is right yeah. there. We'll oh, make that. sure to send that to Jackie so she can she yeah, can maybe put is, a link or whatever. It's a, it's a great image. Isn't that great? We got to go out there. I know we keep saying we're going to yeah, do it. We I have, don't even want to anymore. I, because everybody else it's has It's lost it. its yeah, allure for yeah, sure. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a, like it's exciting anymore. We'll make I, our own Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> is, you know what? You know we have a festival. Yeah. yeah, I've always thought Mind this. Pump Festival. Oh, I've always thought Except this. it's at a hotel I feel like in Cabo. <laughs> That'd be Adam Speed for sure. This is a trait that we all have in common. Last night I was talking to Enzo and his buddy. We were heading to the, the Niner game. We we're talking about cars and different cars that you know uh, that would I want if I were to get another one. And we're just talking about all this shit, right? And they're talking about the Ford Raptor, which is a badass truck right now. Mm. But fucking everybody has it. Everybody on Instagram has one. And I'm like, you know, like that's just so the opposite of me. Like just because yeah. everybody likes, I start to dislike it. I, I know, and I, yes. we all have this in uh, common. It's like yep. something I wanted. Like I might have wanted it, but now I don't want it because yeah. everybody else wants it. Uh, no, 
That's why I don't like yeah. Teslas. You know, Teslas, if you go anywhere else in the country, you don't see a billion of them like you do here in the Bay Area. So they're cool. But here in the Bay Area, I see Tesla. I sp- uh, no, I'm not exaggerating. So if you live anywhere outside of like California or whatever, you probably don't see a whole lot of them. Here in San Jose area, I see five a day. I know. At least five well, there's, that's some, why there's some logic behind that though, yeah. right? Sure. Because all the recharging stations are in California. I know that. So, it originated so, here. But yeah, yeah. Right. I know No, that. I went through that process when I was looking for a classic car. Like when I was like, I'm like, I want to get a hot rod. And I, I was like looking at a lot of Mustangs and I loved Mustangs growing up and stuff. And, and I just like, I, I came across this truck and it was like, Real tough looking, real mean, and, and like I've never seen one. It was this GMC, you know, had big old bullets on the front, real aggressive, and like I've never seen it. I was like, okay, I'm getting that. You know, like everybody has a Mustang, right? Yeah. You know, like, like nobody has that. And like I still, to this day, uh, like occasionally I'll see some, you know, GMC pickup uh, that year, mm-hmm. like somewhere, but it's like it's rusted. It's on some. Yeah. Do you guys ever unpack that and figure out where that comes oh, from? Oh, I know where it comes from. You do? I, yeah, 100%. I don't like to, I don't like to be feel like I'm being uh, coerced or forced into doing yeah. something. So when everybody does what something. What the majority is doing. Yeah, and then I feel well, like. I don't like to be a sheep. Uh, yeah. yeah well, I'd rather be a sheep dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I like that. That's a good yeah, statement. Yeah. I should make a t-shirt yeah, yeah. with that. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm on a roll. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from O'Rourke Q. What scientifically is the pump? What can one do to get the best one in their workout? And if you could keep one forever, would you? Well, obviously. Yes, I think everybody <laughs> obviously. would. You know, the, 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 let the, me tell you. The pump is, it's pretty funny, right? The if pump I, is if, coming. Dude, if I get a full, good pump in my whole body, I look like a completely different person. Like, I'm like, I look like I gained 20 pounds of I, muscle. I didn't put this together until I started competing because competing then forced me to track calories and macros and and push water volume like and things that I never did before and something that I put together early on was man if I have a decent amount of carbs in me and I water load while I'm lifting and I'm training like hypertrophy bro I look like a different human being like a bunch of That's balloons part, I wouldn't I don't I wouldn't take pictures of myself on the on Instagram because like, I'm like if people see this they're going to think I'm a totally different person when they meet me or oh, that's what happens you know, when people funny. meet me I literally <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, I literally knew muscle? nothing of this either. Like I can, I, I can totally like identify with this question because, like, you know, I, I, I definitely trained like hypertrophy style, but I was never like, I, I didn't like realize that like looking in the mirror, I'm getting bigger or anything. That never even crossed my mind. Oh really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Justin now is he's going bodybuilder mode, bro. This 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 contest. I seen him. That's why I told Enzo stop videoing me because he's stealing all my moves. <laughs> I see what I was like, bro. See, your moves. He's doing my mid physique pose. He's doing all the curls. I see him, bro. Man. It's just a natural I thing. You just see start him. doing that shit when you're training like yeah. this, bro. We know. all created programs together. He knows the moves. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I've listened to you guys exhaustively you know, talk about this kind of stuff. <laughs> Ad so. nauseum. I've I've picked it. I've, I've definitely picked yeah, up. That's on a it. joke. I know yeah, that yeah. there's no exercises I'm doing inside yeah, yeah. the gym. Uh, that, yeah, people yeah, watch. Yeah. What the fuck, man? I bought your mass program. You're telling me the secrets of your training. So here, you know, here's the deal. The, the, sci- the scientific term for the pump is transient sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So sarcoplasm triggered is, no sarcoplasm. It, it represents all of the non-muscle fiber structures and fluids and things in your muscle that are not muscle fibers, which obviously. is mostly fluid. Yeah, yes. so blood and water is what's yeah. making the pump happen. Yeah, right? blood, water, glycogen, you know, capillaries, all these other things that and, and that and bringing in that all that fluid when you're getting the pump. Is why it's transient because it comes in yeah. and then it stays there for a little while and then it goes away. And what, what ends up happening when you're – why you get the pump is blood obviously rushes into the muscle to in, to improve uh, performance um, and to accelerate recovery. But it more rushes in faster than can come out. And so you get this buildup of fluid that swells your muscle 
and it makes you feel well, what's interesting awesome. about that is an athlete i always looked at it as a negative thing you know that would happen like i that's a great point so i would yeah i would get to a point where i'd feel like i'd, I'd get this like especially my grip you know i'm trying to Such grip something point. and it's like oh no i can't grip anymore fuck my arms like huge and stiff and what the hell's going on such a great point because in sports if you get super pumped you're fucked yeah. Like if I'm running, if I'm sprinting and playing football or whatever, and my quads get super, super pumped, I may have limited mobility, limited range of motion. Right. It's not something I necessarily want. Right. I actually had, I'll never forget this. It's only happened to me once, but I had a motocross racer hire me as a trainer. And one of the things he wanted was, can you train me so that my forearms don't get so damn pumped? God, I wonder if I, I don't, when think I'm I've trained, I don't think I've trained a motocross. Mm-hmm. That's, that's really, yeah, I'm yeah, one time, be cool. one time. And he told me, I had a pro surfer one time. Did you? Fun, yeah. yeah. But he told me like, you know, the problem is his forearms would get so pumped when he's racing that it would fuck with his grip. And I experienced this in jujitsu as well. Like, so it's a, it's a good point, but here's the deal. The pump itself, pro, we'll get, let's, we'll get into whether or not that actually helps promote muscle growth a little bit later. Well, don't you believe that it's it's volumizing this the 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 muscle cells, right? The mm-hmm. fibers. It's mm-hmm. volumizing them so more nutrients, more water, more stuff can pass through and the theory is that that's going to adapt and expand and get bigger, right? Yeah, From so, the hypertrophy. So, that's what that sort stands of a for. Petri dish for growth. Yeah, so bef- before But this is this is also sorry to interrupt no you problem. again, but this is also what I see what I think I see when I look at a lot of men's physique athletes that I see that re- re- continually come back to the stage and look the same because they constantly get pumped up and then it back mm-hmm. down and pumped up and because they're not they're not progressively adding strength I don't think that they're building that much more muscle fibers they're just expanding them and then yeah. constricting expanding constricting yeah. and you get this kind of similar look because they're not building strength yeah, so here's, so, staying in hypertrophy too long so the the state of health mm. that you're currently in that helps promote a good pump is probably a state of health that also helps promote more muscle building. So what I mean by that is if you're depleted, if you're dehydrated, if you're not well fed, if you're tired, if you don't have good blood flow, you're not going to get a good pump. Also, that also means independent of the pump itself, the fact that you're dehydrated, not well fed, don't get good sleep, don't have good blood flow also is probably going to inhibit muscle growth. So I think the reason why the pump has been so connected to muscle growth mainly is because when you get good pumps, that's a sign that everything's working well. Same thing with overtraining. One of the hmm. first signs of overtraining is you, you're, you stop getting a good pump. Yeah. Well, like don't you, you, I think I think it's mostly the mental game that gets played because you look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. It's the same same game that the scale plays with people. Sure, people sure. people connect that with fat loss because they see the pound on the scale going, but it could be completely wrong, it, right? It, so, it, would you consider occlusion training like an extreme version of the pump, or so? Like sure, how would you describe uh, sure. that? Uh, it, so it's interesting with occlusion training because they're not quite sure how it works. But one of the main theories is that the 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 buildup of the uh, uh, the buildup of waste in the muscle because you, as you when you're burning uh, energy, waste is produced. Um, not unlike your car, like your car burns gas and exhaust comes out. When you're when you're burning fuel through exercise, waste gets created, and your body has a very intricate, complex system that eliminates this waste so that you can keep moving. If the waste accumulates, it burns, it hurts. And you start to lose performance. But that waste accumulation also may be signaling the body, hey, we're doing more work than maybe actually is happening, like with occlusion. You use such light why well, do ten pound dumbbells when I do occlusion curls. Mm-hmm. You know, but the waste buildup is so much that it burns and I by the third set I could barely do ten, you know, reps with them. So it's really the feedback of what that's providing. Yeah, and I think it's telling the body, hey, he's using more weight, but I'm getting less muscle damage because I'm not using a lot of weight, but I'm still stimulating muscle growth as if I were using heavy weight. But the pump itself, again, I think it signals that you're in this great state of health, and so you get this great pump, and so then you build muscle, and you think it's the pump. It's probably, some of it's probably the pump, but most of it's probably that your health is really good. Now, does the pump itself cause muscle growth? This is a little bit of a debate, but a lot of you know exercise scientists say that swelling effect of the muscle sends a signal to the body to build as well. And so the pump itself may also be something that builds muscle which is why we have all these supplements that surround plus it, it that, feels that good that like being said. said but even if that's true right if that if that's the, if that's the prevailing theory it will get adapted to that and so you'll see minimal gains sure. from that if you're continue and that's sure. the, the, the i think for the well, g- look at general pa- listener yeah. i think that's the real takeaway is that there is a lot of value in training for the pump 
There's mm-hmm. a lot of value in that, and I think you should, and I think it should be a phase in your training, as I do strength training. Should Absolutely, be. and and that's should- a good point because like you have strength athletes like powerlifters who m- most of the time don't get a pump. Most of the time they're not getting pumped up because they're doing sets of you know singles and doubles and triples and rest long periods right. in between. That's why their body looks different. But too, I'm sure, but do powerlifters build a lot of muscle? Fuck yeah, powerlifters yeah. build a shit ton of muscle. Maybe not quite as much as bodybuilders, but pretty damn close. Um, and that's probably why they get such a dense look to their body because mm-hmm. they're not working on increasing their body's capacity to get a pump. Like a bodybuilder can really inflate their bodies. Powerlifters and strength athletes, I don't think they have that capacity for the pump, but they build a lot of muscle fiber. Mm-hmm. So when you have a guy like uh, Ben Pollock, who's uh, he's also on our YouTube channel, which is uh, Mind Pump TV, right? Ben Pollock, powerlifter who's now going into bodybuilding, yeah. But he has that hard, He's like a hybrid granite look to his body. But the yeah. dude's been training not like a bodybuilder for most of the time. He's been training. He's like just a, yeah now like training recently as a bodybuilder. Yeah, which is yeah. fascinating to watch yeah. his body change. But there's a lot of supplements surrounding this because if you can give someone something that gives them a better pump when they work out, they're gonna buy it. I'm going to buy a lot of it. Yeah. Which and, is unfortunate because the, the benefits is good getting it through the work the workload. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. where the real benefits mm-hmm. of that you're seeing from the body is not because of this artificial pump as much as it is the what you're So from, these are like the no no NO2 explode those types of supplements. Yeah, now here's the thing though. Studies will show in some cases that increasing nitric oxide does improve performance. Not for strength now, necessarily, but more for more like endurance type stuff. But we still haven't proven that taking something in a supplement will actually do increase that in the body. Uh, well, there is one thing. Uh, beetroot powder or beets. Beets contain uh, natural nitrates that increase nitric oxide. Of course it's something natural. It increases nitric oxide, and it's actually been shown in studies to improve time to exhaustion with cyclists. So I don't know if, hmm. how this necessarily applies to strength, but for stamina and endurance, beetroot powder has actually shown to do that. Now, on the flip side, will you get a better pump from it? Maybe. Nitric oxide dilates blood vessels, opens them up, and you may get a better pump. And as I'm saying this, I'm now remembering the messages I've gotten from people who've drink, uh, who've taken the Organifi uh, red say, juice. Don't they have beets uh, involved in that formula? That's the main uh, main ingredient. The main ingredient is beet root powder, so that's mm-hmm. why it's red. And so I've actually gotten a lot of people tell me, Oh man, I take the beet, the the Organifi red juice, and I get these crazy pumps, and you know it's got it's got to be the beetroot because what else is in there, right? Rhodiola, that's mm-hmm. that's more going to give you energy. Reishi, I believe. Yeah, there's some health stuff in there, but nothing really boosting nitric oxide. Beetroot powder. If you had to compare all of them, citrulline, the amino acid citrulline, and beetroot powder are the killers when it comes to increasing nitric oxide, which theoretically should give you a better pump. And I, I could see some applications. Like I could see, hmm, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, like here's some applications as a trainer. Here's here's one for me. When I was a kid working out, uh, the the last place that I could really connect to with my workouts in terms of feeling was my my back. That was the last part of my body where like I could get a pump in my shoulders, my biceps, my triceps, my chest, my quads, you know, hams, calves. I could get all that pumped. My back was always. I was the same way. Really, it was oh, a, yeah. it was a little elusive. Yeah. You know? I, well, I think I think you know what I found out later. What I didn't know then was the the importance of the mechanics, and that when I was doing these back exercises, I, even though I thought I had good form because I was keeping my elbows in the same plane as somebody who was showing me, I wasn't connecting correctly to my back, and I was pulling with my arms and my shoulders more than anything else, and so. I think once I made that connection... How long did it take you? Do you remember how long it took before you started getting a back pump? Yeah, I was in my 20s. You know, I remember remember training back a lot and never really... I always feeling my biceps super pumped from it, but never feeling my back pumped. You know, and maybe I could even get my back sore, but I never got that pump. That has to be common. Right? It is very common because yeah. it's. I mean, it's your back and your backside and your posterior chain is very hard to activate for almost everybody because, right. I mean, you everything that's in front of you, you're visually stimulated by. You're seeing it. Uh, it's easier to to connect to that. It's, you know, like well, you have to connect. It's hard neurologically to, it's, to things. It's hard to feel the back work. First off, if you don't have a big, if you don't have big back muscles, and let's be frank, if you're new into working out. You don't have big lats to really feel and squeeze. Right. That's number one. Number two, you can't see what they're doing, like you're saying, Justin. And number three, when we pull, we don't 
we don't really understand pull with lats and rhomboids. We understand pull with our arms. Mm-hmm. So that's those are the muscles we rely upon quite a bit, especially the lats. Like I actually could get a mid back pump before I could get a lat pump. Lat pump was like so elusive, right? Mm, yeah. And the way I finally got one was I did pullovers. Yeah, I did a pre exhaust yeah. superset. I did pullovers, and then I went straight to 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 pull downs. And I remember, I'll never forget. I must have been maybe sixteen or seventeen. So this is after at least two or three years of consistent working out. And I remember sitting there on the bench and going, oh shit, I could feel my, my... Now here's the benefit of getting a pump. Now that you have a pump, you have a, you have feedback. Yeah. I can feel the muscle. Yeah, that you're trying to work. So the rest of it's the like workout... solidified a pathway right there. Totally. So yeah. the rest of the workout, every back exercise I did, I was able to work my lats for the first time ever right. and figure that out so I could see a huge benefit... In that regard, you know, in terms of being able to feel what's going on, getting that feedback and be like, oh, okay. Right. You know, I think it, I think it was just as a nice carryover. It's something that I think should be in a, Saying the pump is one thing, but it's really all it is is training in that hypertrophy phase. You're yeah. going to get that. If you're working the muscle correctly and you're doing 15 to 20 reps, you're going to get a pump. Yeah. You know, two, two by second, third set for sure. Yeah. You're going to get, if you're firing it correctly. Now, if it's not working, you might not, which is, that's a great indicator that's that you're not working yeah. it correctly. Did you do, when you would go on stage, would you do things to increase or improve your ability to get a pump so that when you could pump up to go on stage, you'd look, I'm sure bodybuilders do that, right? Oh yeah. That's like do, a big deal. It, trigger sessions. That's the irony, yeah. right? Right. I mean, I mean, they don't call them trigger sessions, right? But I mean, that's what everybody is doing. Mm. Everybody's doing triggers. I mean, everyone ha- carries their, well, not everyone, most every, every athlete would carry you know, a bag and you've got a couple bands inside there and especially areas that like for me. So when I got up on stage, I have, I have a really dominant, dominant back in comparison to a lot of my peers. And so that wasn't a focal point for me. So my, sh- my shoulders, I would really pump up and my chest also my arms, I would leave alone because I already have naturally big arms mm-hmm. opposed even though that's not what people say on YouTube lately. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to win but, uh, that platform, yeah, right. dude. So I, I wouldn't, I would pump up certain muscles that I want to display bigger and then yeah. I would leave the other ones flat for whatever. So interesting. What about diet? Terry, do, 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 because I've read articles on how bodybuilders will, some of them will drink a little alcohol because that's got a little bit of a dilating effect on their veins. So some of them will take the. I didn't really, you know, hmm. there wasn't a lot of things that I bought into as far as the, and there's probably some truth to some of these techniques that people have. I think there's such an individual variance to every single person and athlete that. I mean, even though I did six shows, I actually prepped for seven. I got I dropped out for one because of the flu the last week. I still feel like. I was learning a lot, mm-hmm. you know, about my body. And so there's certain, there was like a process, like for me, like of priorities of where I would go, like adding some sort of an alcohol drink or doing something stupid. like stupid like yeah, that to yeah, me yeah. was just like, I was still like more really likely to throw you off. Right. right. Exactly. We'd more likely throw off the other things that I knew were bigger rocks, mm-hmm. which is what I see a lot mm-hmm. of. I see a lot of people do this. Um, and I, of course, competing is a, an exaggeration of what everybody else does, but this is what we do. We throw the whole kitchen sink at the body uh, at once because oh I heard this is good I heard intermittent fasting is good I heard this is great I said take this and it's like well, more, man, more is better <laughs> right and, and it's like no it's like keep it really simple add things that are really really easy that you can be consistent with first prove to yourself you can be consistent with that variable mm-hmm. so you can actually measure it and and be objective yourself right and go like oh, okay I noticed that I feel these ways and then then add and you can also yeah tease out that way yes. like like things that probably aren't a good fit for you you right. know that, so otherwise yeah who knows yeah. so I mean there's a lot I mean there was I used to see guys slamming skittles in the back trying and, to get that sugar yeah pump drink, or yeah drinking sugar and everything like that and my theory was this like the real hard work was done in all the time heading into that. Yeah. Like if I didn't bring the the dopest, like leanest, shredded, most symmetric. It's almost like they're cramming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to like you're trying to make up for they're lost like airbrushing yeah. shadows. Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> no, know, everybody did You know, that. back in the nineties, now bodybuilders today use uh, well use synthol, which is this oil that you inject in your muscles to make them look bigger. And from what I've heard, most pro bodybuilders use it to a small degree. The stupid ones use a lot and you can tell. But in the 90s, no, there were only a couple guys that used synthol. Not, it wasn't very well known. But what they did use was this anabolic steroid called, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, isicylene, I think it's called. But it was a steroid that was very ineffective at building muscle. I remember I read mm. this whole article on it where if you used it, it wasn't a big muscle builder, but it had this nasty side effect of 
swelling the injection site. So if you inject it in your bicep, you'd get a swollen bicep. <laughs> oh. So I was reading these articles. Like, Here, I'm going to give myself a bee sting. Dude, <laughs> where bodybuilders would backstage and would, get, would inject themselves with like 50 to 100 shots throughout their body where their trainer or the coach is trying to pull up weak body parts Ugh. and then they'd hit the stage looking super so funny. yeah isn't that crazy out. yeah insane but yeah as far as getting a pump and, and you know good diet carbs lots of water and then secondary supplements beet juice or beet root powder like Organifi's red juice try it out and see if it works for you yeah next question is from Sam AJ Hanna thoughts on intuitive resistance training and its benefits or drawbacks Versus tracking and following specific workout regimens. It's a good question. It is a good question. We talk a lot about intuitive nutrition and how that's the ideal. Well, gold again, standard, this but is only going to apply to people that are pretty advanced. Which one's harder? Which one do you think is harder? Intuitive nutrition or intuitive, intuitive training? Intuitive nutrition. Yeah. You Nut- think so? Yeah. Think for you guys or for for other people? I think period. Really? Uh, oh yeah. I think well, because it's it's such an ingrained part of our life. Like we can choose the kind of train you have to eat. Well, yeah, yeah and, and not only that, but everybody either should or should be working towards squatting. Not everybody should be eating the same food. Sure. Yeah, that's So there's true. so many more variables yeah. with nutrition. There's more constants in, yeah. in, in, in yeah, training. Least, yeah, resistance yeah, I training. I agree, I agree. You know what's funny? For me, it's actually harder to intuitive train than it is to intuitive eat. For me personally, which is the opposite. Of really? Me. Yeah. Because training to me, when I go into workout, although I do a lot of intuitive training, as I get into the, the workout itself, sometimes I get caught up in the workout. So like I get caught you, up you could trick I, yourself pretty easily as far as like, well, you know, maybe I really need to just ramp it up today. Yes. And then, yeah, I, I struggle with that a little bit. Yeah, like I could push it too hard or I'll get stuck and I'll be like, well, I know I'm supposed to do 10 reps, but I feel strong. Right. I want to add weight and go in the low rep because I love doing that. So maybe it's just my ego. Maybe my ego is more challenged with training than it is with, uh, well, you know, I, with eating. Well, uh, I, you know, because I've been a heavy tracker of both, um, I still, so my training wheels is still the nutrition side, right? Like I still will revert back to fat secret and tracking my food where training I've tracked enough to know like how my body feels like where I'm pushing it. And I know when I'm like, I know when I'm going to overreach just like I did the other day with my back and like, and I know like, oh, that was a little too much and I know how to pull it back where that's really easy for me because I've done the Mm -hmm. tracking and and, and paying attention to my volume and, and progressing that over week over week where nutrition you know, here I am. Like, one of the things that has actually been really a struggle for me was, is realizing like how significantly slower my metabolism is. I mean, I talk on this show all the time about being the guy who ate five thousand calories and stuff. I'm definitely not that guy anymore. You know, like I am. My the amount of calories my body is burning, which a uh, duh. I mean, I'm 175 pounds of lean body mass. I was over 200 pounds of lean mass yeah. when I was competing. So that, that's 25 to 30 pounds of muscle. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's of course a, you're not going to burn. Yeah, yeah of yeah, course yeah, I'm not going to yeah. burn as much. What am I, an idiot or what? You know. And then you add in that I know <laughs> yeah. my mobility and, and movement is way down because of the Achilles and things like that. So, you know, I'm I'm having to be in 2,000 calorie range. Yeah. Like that's crazy for me. That yeah. three 3,500, I would be dropping pounds every day where it's not the same. So that's something that that variable kind of always changes. But the, how I should train my body remains pretty consistent, aside from addressing yeah. imbalances or things. See that, that, that come up. yeah, and, and thinking about it for me too. Like I know that nutrition is a lot more challenging because like just even growing up and going through, I was always challenging my body. I was very in tune with my body and like, you know, what applied on the field. Like when I would train, this happened and this happened. I paid attention to that is what I'm Mm -hmm. trying to say versus eating. I was pretty much not paying attention, you know? And then it's only as of recently in the last few years, like I've, I've really tried to like work on that and like, Mm -hmm. Oh shit, this is a weakness of mine. Like I know, but I've never really took my body through those uh, challenges with nutrition. And so I'm like, I got a lot of catching up to do with that, to get to a new, an intuitive uh, type of a schedule. You know what I, what really fascinates me about intuitive training is, um, Remember when we were talking to Paul Check and he says he has this system where he has his athletes every morning wake up, yeah, yeah. take yeah. their pulse, and, and then he said if they're outside of this range, I can guarantee you with 80% accuracy. It's HRV before H- HRV was yeah, a he, thing. Oh, I mean, the guy's yeah. brilliant, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing this shit, by the way, before anybody else. There was no, Nobody else was really talking Which about Which I hate to say, but it's probably even more accurate than any of these devices I, out there. I would agree, and Mike Salemi said that it was a life changer for him. Yeah. Mike Salemi, who is- He still lives by that. Yep, and, and Salemi is- 
easily one of the highest performing, like in tune athletes I've ever met in my entire life. Right, so super mm-hmm. high, fu- high performing, super super He's strong. Half of all of our size and shits on all of our lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. ridiculous. And an all natural, all, all natural for his whole life. Yeah, yeah. The dude's a freak. And he says it was a game changer. And the the part that blew me away about it was Mike Salemi had been working out forever, and he's not. I go in the gym and I'm a, I'm a meathead. He's a very smart guy. One of the most knowledgeable people I know when it comes to training. And he was saying how much he benefited from this feedback system. Mm -hmm. So his intuitive, you know, him understanding his body intuitively wasn't as accurate as him being able to measure this and adding that into his training. So, and maybe it's just going to take him to the next level because I think once he tracks that, then he starts to identify how he feels at a particular time. I really don't think anybody I've ever trained has any business uh, intuitive training. I really don't. Like, no. I mean, they can't. You know what that looks like? That looks like guys go to the gym and do curls and, and yeah. you know, all day and bench press. Chest, and girl, yeah. yeah. Chest and like high fives. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and here's the thing. This is where where I'm going to I'm gonna backpedal a little bit from that statement I just said. Here, here's where I can see this. If you're somebody who ha- does not want to progress anymore, you've you've reached your, the, the aesthetics, the performance level, the mobility level, you love where you're at and you just want to maintain then absolutely, I think you are in a great place to intuitive train and go in there and do what feels like fun and feels good to the body every single time you want to work out. That's somebody who is not trying to progress and change. Mm. If you're somebody who's trying to change the body somehow, whether it be build muscle or burn body fat, and you're trying to make change, that I think that person should be for sure tracking mm. and mm-hmm. and following something that's rigid because you're you have no idea how much you're going to continue to learn. Yeah, you because, need tangibles in order to yeah, change. And, and by following a program that's all already laid out, it allows you to go, okay, I, that's a one variable I don't have to question because it's consistent. And I can go back on it and I can yeah. look like, oh, I did this, this, and this. Like, okay, wow, when, I, when I'm doing this much chest work throughout the week, look at how much my strength goes up. Look at what it looks like. I can see all these other variables. Whereas if you're trying to intuitive – eat and train or try and intuitively train and you're not you're not you're like oh man my chest looks great is that new exercise i did well maybe it's because you actually increased a thousand pounds of volume that week in chest and didn't realize it because you're not following something structured and so that's why i think that's really we have a few we it takes a long time to get to this point right after you've been training for a long time following well-written programs understanding how your body reacts and feels and what particular pains and aches mean for you and you know what your recovery feels like for you when you you can start to identify like okay I know what these signals mean it means that my recovery needs a little bit of work or I know what this means it means my mobility in this direction mm-hmm. needs a little bit of health but before you can get there you got to follow something that's well written so we have a lot of people in our forum who, and it was by the way this is something we've advocated from day 1 is you follow one of our programs like one of our maps programs, follow it the way we wrote it out. Because here's the deal with with maps. Maps isn't a, it is a specific workout p- program, but more than that, it's a it's a philosophy and understanding of how you train your body. And then within that philosophy, we've designed specific workouts that you follow. And what we encourage people to do is to get the program and see and understand what the philosophy is for athletic training yeah, or for bodybuilding. Follow training. one time through. Follow it so. exactly as it's laid out. Pay attention to how you feel, and then within that philosophy, the next iteration around, you can now modify it and say, okay, I feel like I needed more in this area, or I feel like this exercise didn't serve me well, or I think I need to stay in phase one for four Mm -hmm. weeks instead of three weeks, and stay in phase three for two weeks instead of three weeks, or whatever. We have a lot of people in our forum that that have now that have been following the programs now for two years. Oh yeah, that tend to do that, and that's a that's a good place to start it's just like tracking your food like you start with something that's laid out for you pay attention to your body follow it listen to what's going on listen to signals you gotta have direction yep you know and then you slowly start to change it and make it intuitive to the point where you know i've been working out for can i intuitively train definitely better than most people i've been working out for you know how long 20 25 years i've been working out consistently so I think I can go into a gym and kind of know what to do, but there's also some structure to it. I know what order I tend to work mm-hmm. out in. I know I, I know how to you know what movements I need to focus on. Right, right. You, yeah, you know, cert, there's certain exercises that you would always start in or never start in. You That's know, right. yeah. So there's stuff like that. I think Definitely. that we're all consistent with. Next question is from Swolnick. How can wrist pain be remedied? 
Holding a kettlebell for goblet squats, push-ups, or any type of plank seems to exacerbate it, and I don't want to wear wrist straps. Mm. It's that fully... Is this extended? This is extended, right? The flex extended? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's the fully extended wrist position that... Uh, some many times people have wrist pain in. Dude, this is sure. Th- this was one of the uh, most mind blowing, simple little things that Brink showed us. Yeah, and that's included in Maps Prime Pro. And I, you, I wish I had these tools because as a trainer in the Silicon Valley, I must have had a hundred plus clients like this. That so had, common. This was very, very common. And you know, I had all these things that I would do from, and nothing was as impactful as what Brink. Was, had taught us with Maps Prime Pro, right? And a little, the, the, what that is is people have just lost that connection and range yeah. of motion in their wrist, and so when you do exercises that put strain on that, it yeah. hurts, and it's just because yeah. you, you just move. put all your weight on it, right? You know, without having the strength there to support and stabilize it, and so that's it. Right these there. are these are basically drills to strengthen and that connection, and to be able to actually provide stability again. So yeah, you have to actually like go through the exercises to kind of rebuild that process. It's it's funny because like some of these drills are really silly looking. Yeah, like, right. From from the outside, like I mean, it felt like I was doing the whole like miming. I'm touching boobies. Right? <laughs> that's what it felt like. Yeah. But it's uh, but it's super impactful when you really pay attention to the intent of what you're doing, and then your fingers, how quickly you get disconnected from your fingers, and yep. uh, I mean, it's it's tough. A lot of people don't want to like go through it because it's just like, oh shit, I gotta slow down, really yeah. focus. Yeah, when you look at your joints, your your joints have muscles that surround the joints and, and and move the joints, right? So if you look at your wrist, there's muscles that flex and extend the wrist and, and a little bit of rotation with the fingers, and then there's the joint itself, and there's end ranges of motion of the joint, and what what supports a joint in end range of motion? If I took and stripped all the muscles off of my wrist and then I bent my, my my wrist towards its end range of motion, what's preventing it from continuing to flex or extend are things that like ligaments and tendons or whatever, these these support structures within the joints. And what happens when you lose connection to end ranges of motion is when you go into those end ranges of motion and you don't have good strength and good connection, now you're relying on the joint right. to, to take, hold you to into take that, the stress. Yeah, to hold you in that position. So it's it's no look here's here's a deal. I could stand with 600 pounds on my back, stand straight and stabilize myself. Could I do that and lock my knees and just try and relax in it and let my joints support it? Oh, you, that would be nasty. Yeah. yeah. Right? That'd be very bad. So that's that's there's that's not really that different from what we're talking about. So a lot of your wrist pain is coming from the fact that in these positions, especially like a plank push-up position, in that extended position, you have no strength. So what's happening is your wrist mm-hmm. Is supporting you, or the joint is supporting you the whole time. So one of the best things you can do, this is very easy, is put yourself in that plank position, maybe without weight, so maybe not a full plank, maybe get on hands and knees. Get into that plank position so that your hands are in that fully extended, your wrists are in that full extended position, and then spread your fingers out and try as hard as you can to pull your fingers off the floor. They probably won't move, but just connect to it, and then reverse it. And then try to push mm-hmm. them into the floor. Don't move rotate. your hand. Yeah, and, and then, then do rotate. The same thing. And just try to connect. It's to- like the, it's like the combat stretch for your hands. And when I and it's, when I teach both those to people, I'm like, both these movements I know seem so tedious and so stupid to do, mm-hmm. but I cannot stress to you enough how much it impacts the rest of the kinetic chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's your that's your connection to the real world. Your hands, right? Your hands, right? Your wrist, right there, and then your feet. Like that is your connection to the real world. If you start to lose that, it's going to affect everything else down the rest of the body. And so I know it seems so stupid and little to do those things, but it'll make the world a difference, especially when you're talking about a person like this that feels the stress. Yeah. You absolutely need it. Everybody needs it, but this person for sure needs yeah. it. I know. I remember when I was a, was a kid and I would bench press all the time. That was a favorite exercise. And I would I got this really bad habit of, of putting my wrist in this extended position yeah. with a thumbless grip. And I, I know why I did it. I, 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 was watch, I would watch Pumping Iron and, and Arnold, and there's pictures of Arnold benching that way. Of course, whatever Arnold does is the right way to do it, right? So I, would, I got in this really bad habit of lifting with my wrist extended. And then as I got stronger, my wrist became the weak link. It became the limiting factor. It started kind of inhibiting my ability to press more because my wrist yeah. started hurt. So then what did I do? I bought wrist brace. Yep. You know, wrist braces like powerlifters would wear. Now I could bench more or whatever. Never really fixing the problem. 
Well, years later, as I got older, I started to realize what the problem was. And all I did was I put my thumb around the bar and I straightened my wrist out. Yeah. And I couldn't go as heavy at first because I didn't have the strength in my wrist to have that stabilization. Today, and it took me a while, but now today, that's how I bench. And yeah. I'm far more stable. I never have wrist problems now mm-hmm. when I lift weights. So it's, this is a strength issue. So what I would say is if you're currently inflamed, back out of those movements. Allow the inflammation to subside. When you start to feel okay, put yourself in some of those positions. Try to connect them and get stronger in those positions, and it should prevent you from having more pain. Next question is from Andreas I am For work, I carry around a 20-pound tool bag slung over my shoulder. I'm trying to avoid injury-inducing imbalances, so are there any other considerations aside from switching shoulders? Yeah, that's the obvious one, right? Switch yeah, shoulders. That'd be the obvious. That's, that's probably. I mean, is, does he have another option? Really, when you think about it. Well, exercises. Around oh, your, oh, around, I mean, oh. like about. I was going to say around your waist. Uh, yeah, no, I would say so. Definitely switch sol- shoulders. But a good rule of thumb is, if you're doing something, if you're doing a lot of something, train the opposite hmm. to offset it. So when you have a heavy tool bag over your shoulder. The muscles that are trying to support you are the ones that shrug. So like your elevator scapulae, your traps, like all those muscles that pull up, pull your shoulder up because those are the muscles that have to stay tense to support you. So I would do uh, like downward scapula shrugs. It's a very complicated term, right? It's basically grab onto a lap bar, keep your arms totally straight, and then focus on pulling your shoulders down. So you're doing the opposite movement mm-hmm. to what's, offset that. What's that move, Justin, that um, that you do where you you just you isolate each scapula and you retract and you, you make the, yeah. circle, oh, the circle. shoulder circles, yeah. Oh, scapular circles. circles, basically. Is that what, they're, is yeah. that what yeah. it's called? It's just scapular circles. I mean, if you have the, the ability and the strength to do that, that would be incredible. We have that on our YouTube, don't we? have all that stuff on our we YouTube. We do. We also have it in Prime Pro. But uh, yeah, I mean, even just doing scapular circles hanging, you know, off of a bar is really helpful as well. So, yeah. I mean, I, I love doing that just to counteract a lot of stress I, I tend to build up there. A good general, uh, you know, help for all, all things shoulder. This is a nice, it's a general thing because it can, it kind of helps most issues is, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, with the stick, uh, shoulder, shoulder dislocates. Dis- dislocates. Yeah. It's a, it's a very basic, uh, movement and it's kind of a general shoulder health. You know, it doesn't help everything. But most common shoulder problems, I would say, if you practice shoulder dislocates with good tension, right. you're probably going to well, be. Well, okay. I think you know if I have a client like this, like that, that's just the way I'm going to look at this. Like, of course, you know, throw it over each shoulder, like we said, back and forth. Uh, you know, keep trying to be even about how much you carry on one side, right, to the other. But really, that client, the for me, I'm thinking like they need to have strong, mobile shoulders. Mm-hmm. So their workout, the you know, yeah, and this they is, need to pattern that constantly with rotational. Right. This is this is what we really this is what we really used to get paid for, right? This person could have a normal goal like anyone else. I want to build muscle. I want to burn body fat. But then I also have this thing. Okay. And well, that's the value, right? There. Right. And that's the real value in the the trainer, right? That has the ability to go like, okay, cool. So we're gonna all, everything else, nutrition, we're gonna be dialed in. We're training gonna account the whole, for this. We're gonna take it. Yeah. And that that takes now a higher priority over other things or exercise that we might do. So a priority for this. person person like I would and this is how we structured all the maps program so mm-hmm. I would always if I was a trainer have a tool like maps prime and prime pro in my back pocket for an example just like this so I'm like okay so I want to have hyper or not hyper but I want to have very mobile shoulders and I want to have very strong shoulders and so yeah, supported shoulders so I'm going to pull from those exercises and I'm going to incorporate that into my training re- regimen for my client or for myself if this is me yeah talking. basically what you want to do is create yourself a ritual that you're like just because you know that you're going to be doing this for work and it's your job it's like I feel like everybody you know no matter what it is you do if, especially if it's a, a labor-intensive job you have this this sort of plan like going into it and then how you're going to like come home and sort of uh you know recuperate from it and uh this is something i have helped like uh you know a client of mine even had like a frozen shoulder so we went through a whole process of like okay what does my routine look like what does my ritual look like when i get up in the morning and i get against the wall and i'm going to do these very specific movements it's begin it's it's just like walking to you like you have to look at it like every day like this is my ritual And this is going to help to kind of offset or at least keep you somewhat balanced. No, here's the thing. Most pain, a lot of pain, if not most pain, is not the result of injury. It's the result of poor recruitment patterns. This is kind of chronic pain. And it really comes from two things, lack of activity and then repetitive activity. So it's, it's, it's this weird combination of 
lack of activity to balance things out and too much of the same types of activity. So it's either too much sitting too loud or, or yeah, you know, holding the tool bag or this is a common one for women, by the way. The, what this guy's complaining about or asking about is what women tend to feel because they carry a purse and they'll carry it over one shoulder. And so they'll start to get tightness in their neck and their shoulder. And sometimes that causes headaches. There's imbalances, speaking of women, where women will hold their child on one hip oh. and they'll constantly throw one hip out. And next thing you know, they start to develop teachers that are writing on chalkboards. Yeah. So yeah. it's all of that. So yeah. what you want, and look, here's a, this is how we designed uh, MAPS performance, for example. This is the athletic program, right? The reason why a big uh, part of it is mobility is because athletes do repetitive motions all the time. That's, the, that's what sports is. When you do a sport, there are hallmark repetitive motions that you're going to be doing, and you're doing, them, you're doing them a lot because you want to get really fucking good at them. Like You want to get so good at them that every time you swing a bat, you're maximizing your power and you're accurate. Or every time you're throwing something, you're throwing it in a way that's maximizing efficiency. And so you do these repetitive motions. Mobility is such a big, I mean, it's such a limiting factor because when you move in one direction all the time or do something all the time, you get good at that, but at the expense of other things and it can cause a lot of problems. So mobility, I'll tell you something right now, in your workouts, especially if you do anything during your day that is repetitive, which is everybody. Right, everybody, sitting, being on a computer. Everybody. Do the opposite movement and focus on, make mobility a focus because that is a limiting factor for I everybody. I almost look at mobility as like interpreting data. Like, so for me, like building up a lot of like uh, my workouts, like I'm, I'm, I'm working out really hard in a certain direction. But then when I get into mobility, it's like, okay, what am I actually doing to my body? Like it reveals all those things. You feel where your joint has restriction now and you feel where like the, there's tension where there wasn't before and there's a looseness here. And so it just helps to kind of like pull all of your attention back into the joints and make sure that it's aligned and things are moving and operating properly. So that way I can go back into adding the stress, adding the load, adding all these things into my uh, performance type gains, but I'm not losing abilities. Well, here's a good example. When you look at boxers, like really, really well-trained boxers, and you look at their bodies and how they're built, one of the most impressive things about boxers, I remember this as a kid when I would watch like Evander Holyfield or Mike Tyson, or especially Holyfield. Holyfield was like this, it looked like a bodybuilder back then. Remember that guy? He was like oh, so dude, muscular. He was so right jacked. Back. And when you'd watch him, and I remember, you know, I'd look at him and I'd be like, fuck, he's so buff because I was really into muscles. And their back muscles are so developed. Boxers have these incredibly developed back muscles. Now, what the hell does a back muscles have to do? I remember thinking this as a kid. You're throwing a punch. You're throwing it in front of you. Yeah, you're pushing with your chest and your shoulders and your triceps. And what does the back have to do? Well, the back is preventing the guy. It's actually and it's actually allowing him to throw his hand mm. as fast and hard as he is because that's the support because right. it's the it's opposite. The that's the opposite. So a good boxer and good boxing trainers do lots of strength training, pulling, pulling. Of course, lots of shoulder stability too, but to strengthen the muscles that pull back mm -hmm. because that's a, that tends to be the limiting factor with your speed and your power. So I guess the rule of thumb here is whatever you're doing a lot of, train the opposite when you go to the gym to offset that that mm -hmm. movement and, and not create those imbalances. Right. Check this out. If you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can download one of our guides for free. We have like nine or maybe even 10 guides on there. Uh, we have a back pain guide and a fat Ooh, loss guide. Keep more up. Leg training guide, chest training guide, calf training guide. There's a lot of guides on there. They're all absolutely free. Mindpumpfree.com. Go get check it out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>